If you like the story you can support the author on Patreon link is in the description. Chapter 1. The Beginning. General POV. It is a beautiful night, the sky full of stars shows its splendor, the full moon illuminates the surroundings. In a forest a small smoke rises, when approaching a small bonfire can be seen, the wood that feeds the fire sizzled, the little illumination generated by the fire shows a tall young man with athletic build, he was sitting, contemplating the small flame generated by the fire. A piece of meat was near the campfire, nailed by a wooden stick, while the young man waited for the meat to reach its cooking point, the delicious aroma it exuded spread through the forest, attracting the predators that were nearby. In the darkness of the forest, a group of five wolves watched the light of the campfire in the distance, the smell of meat led them to this place, as they approached they saw a human sitting, next to him was the corpse of a huge deer of almost two meters with an arrow stuck in its stomach. The movement they made as they approached attracted the human's attention, as they made eye contact with him, the wolves began to growl at him as they surrounded him, giving a sigh the young human stood up, with boredom he took a sword from his side, with a stance he prepared to defend himself from their imminent attack. The first wolf lunged with speed and agility. The young human reacted with dexterity, moving gracefully to dodge the attack. The sword slid with precision in a vertical arc, slicing the air and thus the wolf's side. A shriek of pain was heard as the first wolf was killed. Seeing one of their own being killed the others wasted no time and began their attack, the young man with boredom and fatigue confronts the wolves, his agility and strength allows him to repel several attacks easily. The sword reflects a little of the light of the campfire while cutting the air to repel the attacks of the wolves, although coordinated, they begin to retreat before the skill of the young man, with a diagonal slash the sword is stained with blood by the murder of another wolf. After a few scant minutes of the attack, the wolves, now wounded, begin to retreat and gradually run off into the darkness of the forest. The young man watches as the pack disperses into the darkness of the forest and with a weary sigh, he sits back down near the campfire. Damn pesky wolves! The young man named Jonathan, no, he should be Aldril now, is lost in thought as he watches the flame of the campfire, more than two months ago he transmigrated into this young man's body. Two months ago. Before the transmigration, Aldril was being chased, jumping over a waterfall the poor thing died of a heart attack, due to the extreme fear and adrenaline he suffered. Upon waking up on the banks, was when Jonathan took control of this body, after absorbing Aldril's memories, he learned that he was being chased to kill him, upon seeing his pursuers on the heights of the waterfall, Jonathan set off and hid in the forest. Having been trained in his military service allowed him to take the best course of action, implementing camouflage techniques, he hunted down his pursuers one by one, taking their lives. After dealing with them, he was able to calm down and think more calmly, with the memories he got after taking control of the body, he had an understanding of the time he was in, he was in the medieval era. Shit, I have no memories of how I was able to possess this body, a hunch tells me that the previous soul had already dissipated, that allowed me to take control without any problem, for some reason I can be calm, another person might be in panic to discover that he is in another body and in another era, anyway, may you rest in peace. With those last words spoken into the air, Jonathan, embraced his new identity as Aldril, a new name for a new beginning. As he ransacked the bodies of his pursuers, he remembered why they were chasing him and wanted to kill him. The reason why he was persecuted was because the wife of the chief of the village fell in love with Aldril and the chief wanted to get rid of him when he found out. When he managed to escape and leave the village, some bandits who were hired by the chief of the village, followed him in order to kill him. To avoid possible trouble, he bought a horse and supplies in a town near Lindora and then left town for the night. Since Aldril has lived in the town of Lindora since he was born, his memory has only extremely limited knowledge of places outside the town of Lindora. So Aldril can only ride his horse, move on and let fate decide his path. Present. Looking away from the fire, Aldril looked at the meat it's almost ready fixing his gaze on the pair of dead wolves, he commented I could sell their skin in the nearby town, the skins of these wolves sell very well with that I'll have some extra money in my pocket. Focusing his attention on his horse who was still eating so calmly, despite the fact that not long ago some wolves came to attack him. His calm temperament in the face of predators, his black color, his finely manicured mane, gave him an air of nobility, no doubt it was lucky to come across this horse, although it cost him almost all his money, he did not regret buying him. Do you feel safe being with me big guy? Haha. <laughs> At his comment, the horse just gave a snort and continued eating. Sometimes I wonder if you can understand me with a smile, he stood up and went to pick up the wolf's body. As he approached the wolves a few small lights emerged from the wolf's body, then the lights went to Aldril's body, 
as they entered his body an image appeared in his mind. Turum. That sound always reminds me of when you open the menu in the classic Resident Evil. Name, Aldril. Race, Human Slash. Attribute Points, 1. Attribute, Strength Plus, Constitution Plus, Agility Plus, Mentality Plus. Skill, Universal Language, Military Survival LV2, Dark Wolf Swordsmanship LV1, Archery LV2. Talent, Good Fingers, Special Ability. World Exploration, 0.01%. So I have a point to distribute after killing the guards, he got this system, he is grateful that the one he got is simple and doesn't force him to be their slave. I was testing for two months how to have points and now I can finally have one. This is the fourth attack he has suffered in these two months as he goes on his aimless way, besides hunting, he only does some errands from the villages he gets to meet so it is likely that he got the point for killing the animals that attacked him. I guess, killing bigger animals or in more quantity, more points be able to get, unless there is a condition, well, I already have the direction to get points, it's just a matter of time for me to have more. Reading once again his attributes, I contemplate where it would be most optimal to place the point he has. The four attributes of strength, constitution, agility and mentality should represent the four attributes of the body itself. The end sign that appears is the indicator of the attributes that can be strengthened and improved. The skills section is also easy to understand, it is the section that represents the skills he has mastered. Universal language is the one that allows him to understand the language of this era, in his previous life he spoke three languages, Spanish, English and Russian, but in this era they speak a language he had never heard of, so it was an advantage to have this skill. Military survival is the one that encompasses everything he was trained in during his military service, whether it be the handling of bladed weapons, camouflage, survival, etc. Dark wolf fencing is the fencing invented by Aldril, a fencing based on efficiency and speed, just like archery which was where Aldril excelled, as he had a talent for being an archer, hence it is the only skill in LV2. Talent, good fingers is a skill he has had since he was a child and helped him to be able to make his own arrows and make his own clothes. And in the last line of the system exploration degree literally, it should mean to travel around the world and explore it, but this era is similar to the Middle Ages, without cars and airplanes it is almost impossible to travel around the world, it is possible to achieve it is already very old age. Closing the interface he gave a sigh and returned with the wolf's body and placed it next to the campfire, while waiting for its meat to cook he found himself remembering his former life. After leaving his military service he went to college and graduated as a chemical engineer, then went to work for a company that exploited him. Despite the fatigue, he always found time to exercise and occasionally played some video games or read a book of interest. It wasn't the best life, but remembering it makes me melancholy. Bzzzz. The sound of meat brought him out of his thoughts, he looked at the black meat and exclaimed, Oh no, the meat got burned. Now I have to prepare another fucking one. Cursing, he took the burnt meat and threw it away, prepared another stick, cut another piece of the deer and put it on the fire, this time focusing his attention to the meat. While he was looking at the meat some footsteps called his attention, turning to where they were heard. Aldril saw an old man riding a horse and riding with soft steps towards where he was. He quickly stood up and prepared his sword for a possible confrontation. The tall old man, with grey robes, wizard shades, long grey hair and carrying a wooden staff approached and with a smile, looked at Aldril. Good evening young man, I hope the presence of this old man does not disturb your dinner. Seeing the silence of the Aldril the old man realized something and with a kindly laugh said where are my manners, my name is Gandalf, a pleasure. As Gandalf introduced himself, Aldril's thoughts had only one response. Well, shit. Chapter 2, Pleasant Dinner My name is Gandalf, a pleasure. POV Aldril Looking at the old man in front of me, I was stunned the moment I heard his name. I liked watching fantasy movies and middle-age documentaries, hence the Lord of the Rings movies were one of my favorites, I watched all the movies, the Hobbit trilogy and the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Although I was not at the level of being an unconditional fan, I did know well the names of the important characters, that's why I was stunned to know that this old man in front of me is one of the important characters the Grey Wizard Gandalf. And the worst thing about having met Gandalf is that his presence confirms that I'm not in the medieval era, I'm in the damn world of the Lord of the Rings. That outfit, the wooden stick he carried in his hand, no doubt it is Gandalf, I should have imagined that I would not be in a simple world, my transmigration, the appearance of a system, Everything indicated that the world in which I found myself was not simple at all. At this moment, 
despite the jumble of emotions within me, a question arose in my mind what timeline am I in? Seeing his grey robe I narrowed down the timelines, possibly it is before the Fellowship of the Ring is formed or at the beginning of the Hobbit movies. My thoughts were quick and only lasted a few seconds, with a smile I looked at Gandalf and casually said an apology for my discourteous behaviour, I don't usually have late night visitors. Haha <laughs> I understand you young man, I too would be on my guard if someone shows up in the middle of the night Gandalf replied to subsequently get off his horse and sit down right at the campfire. Seeing how you look at the meat, I can hint that you have not dined, so be my guest and you may take the piece of meat that will soon be ready I said to subsequently cut another piece of meat from the deer. Oh I thank you young man, I certainly haven't had dinner yet with a smile Gandalf replies to me. By the way, my name is Aldril. A pleasure I said as I placed the piece of meat near the campfire and gave a slight smile to Gandalf. General POV. With few words, they both enjoyed the silence while having dinner, if someone saw them, they would think they were friends and it wouldn't be far from the truth. Men being very simple, it is very easy for us to make friends and even more so with the personality of both of them. Gandalf as mayor sent to help the inhabitants of Middle-earth to fight against the has a kind, fair and firm personality with the inhabitants, Besides being humorous and witty, this has made him a wide range of friends all over Middle-earth. Aldril, on the other hand, is calm, open-minded, kind and humorous, but that doesn't mean you should provoke him, if you are kind to him, he will be kind to you. Aldril are you a ranger? Asked Gandalf as he wiped his mouth. Ranger. Hearing Gandalf speak, Aldril paused and with a hand to his chin replied more than a ranger, I consider myself an adventurer, as long as there is good pay. I will be there helping. In fact, he has acted as an adventurer, as while traveling he has done many tasks given to him by the people of the villages he passes through, this has made his reputation grow to a certain extent, as he always accomplishes the assigned tasks quickly and efficiently. The rangers Gandalf refers to are usually those who are stationed in the forests and guard a certain area, such as Faramir's men of Ithilien. Adventurer. Hearing Aldril's words, Gandalf frowned slightly, remembering that on his way he heard many people say that a young adventurer was efficient in accomplishing the tasks assigned to him, be it hunting a bear, protecting merchandise, etc. So you are that person the people in the nearby villages talk so much about Gandalf looked at Aldril and smiled. Well, I haven't seen anybody's so far, so I guess if it's me haha. Aldril replied with a small laugh. He took the profession of adventurer from other fantasy movies and anime, he decided to use this identity to walk around this world. As to whether there were adventurers in Middle-earth, he had no idea if there was such a profession. And you, Gandalf? With that robe and staff are you a wizard? Hearing Aldril's question, Gandalf smiled and said simply, You are right, as you can see, I am a wizard, so let me introduce myself properly, I am Gandalf the Grey Wizard. In that case, I'll introduce myself properly, my name is Aldril the Adventurer with a hand on his chest, Aldril gave a small bow. Haha <laughs> slash haha. The mood became cheerful, as they both continued to eat Gandalf continued the talk. By the way Aldril, what business are you coming to the Shire for? Asked Gandalf, as he cut a piece of meat from the deer, seeing the large deer and the small friendship he made with Aldril, he intended to eat his fill. The Shire? Now that he knew he was in Middle Earth, Aldril reacted immediately when he heard Gandalf talk about his route. Well, the truth is I had no idea I was going to the Shire. I just let fate take me anywhere Aldril said as he shook his head. Well, with the way you travel, you are fortunate that you did not head for Mordor. Gandalf replied with a chuckle as he pulled out his pipe and filled it with weed. Taking a puff, Gandalf relaxed and with an inviting gesture offered it to Aldril. Oh, no thanks, I don't smoke with a wave of his hand, Aldril declined. Shrugging his shoulders, Gandalf did not insist and continued eating while taking puffs on his pipe. By the way Gandalf. Since you are a wizard, I imagine you know many people, if any of your acquaintances need help, you can tell me and I will gladly help with whatever the task is. Aldril smiled and spoke, but there was a hint of embarrassment on his face. With a twinkle in his eye, Gandalf took another puff and said with a mysterious smile well, there is. Hello. This is your favorite author. I hope you felt the calm atmosphere of the conversation. Coming soon on Patreon 10 advanced chapters, they are in process. Chapter 3, Chapter 3, Improved Ability Aldril POV Did he really say there was someone? I certainly only said it for the sake of conviviality. I spoke to Gandalf not to get into the plot, 
it was simply because he was one of my favorite characters and it would be nice to leave a first impression. If he's an acquaintance of Gandalf's it can't be just anyone, remembering Gandalf's words. This road leads to the Shire, in which case Gandalf will go to the Shire, either to go to Bilbo Baggins' birthday, in which case he would be at the beginning of the events of the Fellowship of the Ring. The other option is that he will go for Bilbo's help, as Bilbo is a treasure hunter, thief to some, to help Thorin Oakenshield, in which case he would be at the beginning of The Hobbit. Either one would get me involved in the story. I was scared, but at the same time very excited. In my other life I wanted to explore the world, to go on adventures, but the economic situation did not allow me to do so, so I had to keep that dream deep inside me. Now that I have the opportunity, why not take it? Even if I die, I will enjoy an exciting adventure. I have nothing to lose, better to die doing what you always wanted than to live a boring life. As I continued to think, Gandalf's voice pulled my thoughts back and I paid attention. Since you gave me a nice dinner, it is only fair that I introduce you to someone who needs help. Also, this person needs an adventurer to help him on his way. Come with me tomorrow and I will introduce you to the person. I promise you that the commission for your help will be very good, Gandalf said with a smile as he took another puff of his pipe. In that case, I will come with you tomorrow, I said as the anticipation of a great adventure filled my insides. General POV Intuition told Gandalf that the boy in front of him was not a normal person. Something told him that he should take the boy on the next adventure, and he knows his intuition never failed. Looking at the excited boy, he saw that the boy was not evil, he had no malice, in his eyes there was only a huge eagerness for an adventure. Besides, from what he had heard from the villages he passed through, the boy would take on wolves and bears as if it were child's play. He would undoubtedly be a great help for the next dangerous journey. Now, with Aldril joining the team, he has to wait for the night to pass before heading to the Shire to find the last member of the next adventure, Bilbo Baggins, a hobbit who is an expert treasure hunter. At the same time, he has to meet Thorin and his company of twelve dwarves. The two met in Bree and, over drinks, talked about the idea of reclaiming Erebor, the lonely mountain. To add members to the team, Gandalf had to select people who would benefit the team. He knew Aldril would be a good addition to the team, but he wasn't sure Thorin would agree with him. Although that was the least of his problems, his intuition told him that his decision to bring him in was the right one. It's a pity I don't drink beer, otherwise I would have bought you a drink to celebrate, Aldril said cheerfully. That's fine, you can buy me a drink when we get to the Shire. It's not far from here, at most we should arrive tomorrow night. After taking a final puff on his pipe, he spat out the smoke, gave the pipe little taps, and smiled. Of course, one drink won't be enough. Ha ha slash ha ha. In that case I'll have to sell these wolf skins so I can buy you more than one drink. As the night deepened, the two spoke no more, and each leaned against a log in order to sleep. There were no dangers around for the moment. Besides, with Aldril and Gandalf's strength, even if something wanted to come close to attack them, they would both react quickly. So, naturally, there was no need for anyone to keep watch. Aldril POV As I closed my eyes the system appeared in my mind and I saw it change a bit after meeting Gandalf. Name, Aldril. Race, Human Slash. Attribute points, 1. Attribute, Strength plus, Constitution plus, Agility plus, Mentality plus. Skill, Universal Language, Military Survival LV2, Dark Wolf Swordsmanship LV1, Archery LV2. Talent, Good Fingers, Special Ability. World Exploration, 0.1%. Wow, World Exploration, which was originally only 0.01%, has become 0.1% dot. From the time I transmigrated until today, the progress of world exploration had only reached 0.01%. Despite passing through several villages, the percentage had not increased. The sudden increase must have occurred because of meeting Gandalf. This leads me to the conclusion that to increase the percentage I must know all the major characters in Middle-earth and the major cities, or participate in the plot. This is in line with my enthusiasm for exploring the world of the Lord of the Rings, and it may be that by increasing world exploration, my system will give me some points or skills. With this in mind, I stopped looking at world exploration and focused on the attribute points column. Strengthen one of my attributes or one of the skills. All four attributes are not a problem, as I have been able to easily kill bears over 5 meters with no problem. So I have no doubt that killing an orc will be easier. Besides, I'm 20 years old and in the midst of my youth. 
Gandalf has already said that I will meet whoever needs my help in the Shire. From my recollection, it is most likely to be the stubborn and proud dwarf Prince Thorin. Thorin considers this journey to Erebor very important, and it will not be easy for him to accept me. But with Gandalf's backing, I am sure I will be able to accompany them. I know from the movies that Thorin is very stubborn and it would be hard to impress him if I don't prove my prowess. Thinking about this, I immediately discarded the idea of strengthening one of the four attributes. Therefore, I focused on the skill column. Military survival is not bad, but considering that I am in a fantasy world of magic and swords, I discarded the idea of raising it. Level 2 is just fine for the time being. Dark Wolf Swordsmanship and Archery are two skills that the original Aldril counted on, and over the course of these months, I mastered them. Currently, my level 2 archery makes me look like an elf because of the accuracy with which I shoot. As for my swordplay, it's good, but it can be better. With my decision made, a white light flashed on the skills and what would give me the best chance of survival appeared. Dark Wolf Swordsmanship LV2 How eager to start this journey with that last comment I let sleep take over me. Hello. Here is your favorite author. Some chapters will be longer slash shorter than others, I hope you don't mind. I wanted to put a little bit about the MC's motivation to get involved in the story, I hope you like it. Chapter 5, Chapter 4, Strange Dream General POV Unbeknownst to Aldril in his skill column a light began to flicker and the name of the skill Dark Wolf Fencing began to change, the change made that while Aldril slept he had a dream where he would meet someone very peculiar. From the dim darkness of his mind, a wooded landscape emerged, where the leaves of the trees moved slowly giving a calm and relaxing atmosphere. In the midst of this wooded landscape, a person was elegantly swinging a silver sword, with a fluid motion his sword tracing graceful arcs. The sword makes a tinkling sound as it cuts through the air. Zzzsh every movement has a natural elegance and all of this was observed by Aldril who was fascinated by the figure's movements. Holy shit, how beautiful am I dreaming about this? Aldril said with his eyes fixed on the person, as he got closer the features of the person started to become more noticeable, long white hair, tanned complexion, eyes of an intense yellow color, cat pupil. This person looks familiar to me, where have I seen him? With a little fear Aldril approached, when he was about five meters away the person stopped his movement and turned to look at him. Backing up a few steps because of the sudden movement, Aldril was stunned now I remember his name, it's that damned Gerald of Rivia. The witcher looked at him with a serene smile are you ready, boy? Gerald asked in his deep voice, without explanation subsequently throwing his sword at Aldril. Catching the sword in midair Aldril felt his heart pounding with excitement and nervousness. Gerald advanced and stood beside him. All right kid, I will teach you the style of the wolf school, so get ready. First, the stance placing Aldril's feet in the correct position, the knees were slightly bent remember to always keep your balance as it is very important in combat. Now copy my moves pulling out a second sword Gerald with movement he began to demonstrate the basic moves keep a firm but not tense grip, cuts must be precise and for defense you must stay balanced, observe your opponent, look for a weakness and exploit it. Aldril watched each movement carefully, absorbing every detail with ah oh friend, if I learn this style of sword effective against monsters, the poor orcs will suffer with a small chuckle at his thoughts Aldril began to follow Gerald's steps, he began to imitate the movements. The key is in the fluidity. Let the sword be an extension of yourself, a dance of steel and will. With each repetition Aldril began to feel more confident, more in tune with the sword. Each cut became more precise more instinctive, he felt as if he was in a trance, where the only thing that mattered was the movement of the sword. Time seemed to stand still as Gerald and Aldril continued their dance of steel. Every move was a lesson, every blow a revelation. Aldril knew that this dream would bring him many benefits. Probably because of the system will it always be like this? He wondered as he followed Gerald's movements. Raising his eyes to the sky, Gerald spoke all right kid, that's all I can teach you, you already have the bases it's just a matter of time and practice for you to be as good as me. Stopping Aldril looked at him and nodded, he knew he was about to wake up, as the scenery around him began to blur thank you for teaching me, I really appreciate it offering him his silver sword back Gerald shook his head. Keep it. It will help you on your journey with a smile Gerald began to disappear don't die child with those last words Gerald disappeared. With a smile Aldril bowed in a form of respect towards the place where Gerald was, to subsequently also disappear. Piping 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 piping. The soft sound of the birds singing in the morning gave a touch of tranquility to the warm morning, Aldril opened his eyes slowly, still lying on the log where he slept, 
his thoughts wandered to that dream he had that was a beautiful dream, who wouldn't be happy if he dreamed that Gerald? Only a heretic wouldn't be happy. Looking at Gandalf who was still sleeping, Aldril shook his head and decided to look at his system as Gandalf awoke. Name, Aldril. Race, human slash. Attribute points, zero. Attribute, strength plus, constitution plus, agility plus, mentality plus. Skill, universal language, military survival LV2, wolf school style LV1, archery LV2. Talent, good fingers, special skill. World exploration, 0.1%. Looking at the skill column, Aldril was surprised for a few seconds, but that surprise was replaced by ecstasy. So that wasn't just any dream, oh man, the orcs won't know I killed them, wait, if it wasn't a normal dream, that means looking at the swords at his side he was glad and with a big smile he noticed a new sword lying in its sheath next to his own. It definitely wasn't a normal dream. Hello. Here is your favorite author, I decided to introduce Gerald's sword skill, because it is very effective against monsters. And if you ask, Aldril's appearance is not yet described, but he is like a Gerald, only with black hair and younger. You can see, from here I will start to change the story, I hope you like my new inclusions. Another question, what price would you be willing to pay to read advanced chapters on Patreon? I want to have accessible prices for everyone, I hope you support me. Chapter 6, Chapter 5, My Horse What? General POV With hands trembling with excitement, Aldril slid the new sword from its sheath. Swish. The morning sunlight reflected a silvery glow on the blade of the sword that seemed almost unearthly. How beautiful! He exclaimed, marveling at the beauty and quality of the weapon. The series does not do credit to such a sword and to think that every witcher counted on one I wouldn't lie to say that I was both amazed and intrigued. How is it that the sword was able to get here, was it because of that dream? That dream was influenced by the system or something else, but for the moment I won't think about that, now I will make the most of this new addition to my arsenal. Deftly swinging the sword, he felt his weight and balance perfectly balanced his trance was interrupted by the sound of a yawn. Yawn as he slowly stood up, Gandalf stretched his body and looked at Aldril who was swinging his sword practicing in the morning. He asked him. That's right, I always try to stay in shape with a smile Aldril replied as he took the sheath and put the sword away I will wash my face and after that we can have breakfast. All right, I'll light the fire and put on a couple of meats Gandalf said then he picked up his cane and recited a chant under his breath. FZZT a small spark flew out of the staff and lit the campfire. How convenient magic is Aldril muttered, turning around and approaching his makeshift backpack, pulling from it a canteen and a peculiar plant that has blue leaves resembling the shape of a fan. The plant he picked up has the ability to generate foam and leaves a pleasant smell, it is a natural soap in a nutshell. While traveling he found this plant, finding its resemblance to the Zihu Himali plant, green soap in Nahuatl, Used by the Aztecs for bathing, taking a few, he experimented with them and was surprised to find that they also lathered and left a pleasant smell. Since that day he has used these plants to bathe or wash his face. If I am going to undertake the journey with Thorin's group of dwarves I will have to measure the times I bathe, I should not waste water on long journeys Aldril said to himself while he carved his face and moistened a cloth to then pass it over his face. After a brief wash, Aldril joined Gandalf for breakfast. As he ate his breakfast, Aldril looked at the carcass of the stag it's big, I doubt we'll be able to finish it all. How far are we from the Shire, Gandalf? Gandalf, with his characteristic serenity, took another bite of his breakfast we are half a day from the borders of the Shire, he replied, looking up towards the horizon. There you could sell what's left of the meat and wolf skin you carry. Hobbit merchants are always on the lookout for good produce, it will be easy to sell what you carry. Nodding. Aldril finished his breakfast and began to cut up the carcass of the stag, after he took the last bite of his meat, Gandalf came over to help. It didn't take them long to separate the entrails and cut the meat into portions that would be easy to carry. As the pieces of deer meat were hung on the backs of his horse, Aldril swore to see his horse grimace in disgust, damn, I swear to god this horse is not normal. Haha, <laughs> your horse is definitely not normal, I can see arrogance and pride in his eyes where did you get him? Gandalf asked as he climbed onto his horse. Getting on his horse Aldril smiled at Gandalf how about telling you the story of how I got this big guy as we go along. At his words the horse neighed. Haha <laughs> well, a good talk makes the road less boring. The sun was already beginning to show itself in all its splendor on the horizon, painting the sky with warm, golden tones. 
Aldril and Gandalf prepared to set out on their journey to the Shire. As Aldril rode behind Gandalf, he recounted the facts of how he tamed his horse. Well, it all began one morning. Flashback scene. Aldril could be seen entering the village with a cloak that hid all his features, not long ago he had transmigrated, he needed to get away as fast as possible from Lindora because of the actions that the original Aldril committed, for that reason he came to this nearby village to see if he could get a horse. A young lady dressed as a peasant passed near him, upon seeing the young Aldril he stopped her excuse me miss could you tell me if in this village there will be someone who sells horses? Oh yes, old Lloyd is selling his horses, just go straight ahead and you will see the stable. Thanking her, Aldril followed the young woman's instructions and arrived at an old stable that had several horses. As Aldril was inspecting the horses an old man approached and with a smile spoke Hello young man, I see you've come for the horses any that interest you. Returning the smile, Aldril spoke politely that's right, I came for a horse, one that is sturdy and agile. The old man smiled, leading Aldril towards the stable where the horses neighed at the sight of the old man. Tough and agile, do you have a preference as to color? Aldril watched the horses carefully I'm open to any color. In that case, follow me, I'll show you each of them. After a few minutes of looking at the horses Aldril asked nervously so how much are you asking for a horse? Each one is worth 40 silver coins, if you went elsewhere a horse would cost you much more expensive. Oh shit, I only have 10 silver coins from my savings and 30 bronze I stole from those guys Aldril muttered, then shook his head can't you let me have it cheaper? I only have 10 silver. Shaking his head the old man turned him down I'm sorry young man, that's the lowest price I can sell them for. With a sigh of defeat Aldril prepared to leave, but the moment he turned around he felt a very intense gaze, turning his head towards the direction he felt the gaze, Aldril saw a black horse, with noble bearing and a finely manicured mane, looking into those eyes he saw an arrogant and noble look. That horse you didn't show me. Following the direction of Aldril gaze the old man quickly shook his head that horse is not for sale. It is very aggressive it has killed by stomping anyone who tries to tame it, I was thinking of slaughtering it this afternoon, so it is not for sale. Approaching the horse Aldril kept looking him in the eye, with a whinny the horse looked away. How about ten silver coins for him? Aldril turned around and smiled at the old man who was looking at him as if he was an idiot. With a sigh, the old man agreed fine, I won't insist, you're a big boy and you know what you're doing, if it hurts you don't come and give it back to me nodding to the old man. Aldril took out the bag of his coins and threw them to the old man. Approaching the horse carefully, Aldril felt the intensity of his gaze as the animal watched him with distrust. Despite the old man's warnings, his intuition told him that he had to buy this horse. As Aldril led the horse out, the old man spoke again I warn you, boy, this horse is very dangerous. Nodding seriously, Aldril replied in a firm tone I understand, but I am willing to take that risk. With the deal done, Aldril advanced through the village, thankful that the horse was behaving himself, he started to buy some provisions with the money he had left. Already on the outskirts of the village, Aldril decided to tie the horse to a tree and started trying to tame him, at first it was difficult, as the horse would not let Aldril get too close to him. How do I manage to tame it? He thought, until an idea came to him from what was said in his previous world I must be gentle and try to speak to it tenderly so that the animal does not feel threatened with decision he approached the horse in a friendlier way. Hello, friend, we got off to a bad start, so let me fix it he began, extending his hand gently. I'm Aldril, I'm approaching you in the hope that you will allow me to gain your trust. The horse watched Aldril curiously, his gaze was just as intense but this time it didn't feel threatening. He emitted a soft whinny, as if he was evaluating his words. I will call you Shadow Star, Aldril continued, his tone brimming with warmth and respect. Since your beauty lies in the darkness and because you will be the beacon of light that guides me in the darkness. Shadow Star seemed to respond to the name with a slight nod of her head, as if in agreement with Aldril's choice. Stepping closer, he allowed Aldril to stroke his beautiful mane I believe that together we can accomplish great things, Aldril said, his voice carrying a hint of excitement. You and I, we can face any challenge that comes our way the steed whinnied softly, as if agreeing with his words. Together we will ride into the future with courage and determination, Aldril declared, his gaze fixed on the horse's eyes. And together, we will experience many adventures. With a whinny of affirmation he bent down and looked at Aldril, allowing him to mount him, with a smile Aldril placed the saddle on him, looking at the slightly worn saddle, Grimstar looked at him with a bearish look. Sensing his stare, Aldril chuckled sorry buddy, 
I promise I'll get you one in better condition with an A. The horse turned his head away, as if ignoring him. Haha I feel like this horse can understand human language Aldril muttered as he adjusted the saddle. On that day a new friendship was born, a union between an adventurer and his noble steed, destined to have their names engraved in the annals of history. Present. And that's how I managed to tame this big guy who runs faster than the wind and outruns any horse we come across Aldril said as he patted Grimstar, while the horse whinnied as if in agreement. At the front Gandalf was silent for a moment as he muttered horse that possibly understands human language, proud and arrogant look with a smile, he turned to look at Aldril. Without a doubt, an exceptional horse, I don't think you have realized that your horse is a descendant of Fuller of Father of the Miras, Lord of Horses and the horse of Eorl of Rohan, you have with you one of the best horses in all of Middle-earth Gandalf said, as he laughed upon seeing Aldril's surprised face. My horse what? asked Aldril in surprise only to come out of his trance as he laughed haha, so my big guy is the best in Middle-earth at his comments Shadow Star Nate and raised his head with pride. Yes, a great horse, but how did he end up in these parts? wondered Gandalf quietly. Finishing stroking his horse, Aldril looked at Gandalf and with a twinkle in his eye asked and you Gandalf do you have any stories about dragons? Snapped out of his thoughts by Aldril's voice, Gandalf was quiet for a few seconds, then spoke with a twinkle in his eye sure. I have a few would you like to hear about Ankalagan the Black or Smog? And Boom. There you have it that our MC's horse is not normal, Grey Shade is not the only descendant of Fullerof. If you only saw the movies, don't worry, I'll be giving a brief explanation of things, although I've only read a bit of the books, everything else I get from the wiki haha. Chapter 7, Chapter 6, Ankalagan the Black General POV Ankalagan the Black? I've never heard of him. Aldril said as he pondered the name of that dragon. He liked the Lord of the Rings, but he hadn't read all the books, hence his bewilderment at not knowing anything about Ankalagan. Looking at Aldril's bewilderment, Gandalf chuckled a little. In that case, let me tell you about the redoubtable Ankalagan the Black, he said with a spark of excitement in his eyes. Ankalagan was one of the mightiest and most terrible dragons that ever took to the skies of Middle-earth, Gandalf began he was the leader of the winged dragons, known as the Uraloki and his power was feared by the elves and men of that time. Aldril listened intently, his face excited and curious at Gandalf's tale it is said that Ankalagan took part in the famous Battle of the Plains of Anfogleth during the First Age, fighting on the side of Morgoth, the Dark Lord. It was in this battle that Ankalagan and his brothers, the dragons, wrought chaos and destruction. Gandalf paused as he took a drink of water. But the most impressive thing about Ankalagan was his mammoth size. It is said that he was so large that he could darken the sky with his outstretched wings. His roar was like the roar of thunder, and his scorching breath could melt even Mithril said to be the strongest metal in all of Middle-earth. Aldril was completely engrossed in the story, amazed at the information he was receiving, he did not doubt the veracity of the story since Gandalf is the one who was telling it. That is fascinating, such a dragon, who could slay such a beast of such caliber Gandalf. Gandalf's smile widened at Aldril's curious question. Do you not doubt that what I am telling you is just a tale? He said as he turned to look at him with a hint of mischief in his gaze. A wizard never lies, Gandalf, so I don't think it's just a tale, Aldril replied. Then who killed Ankalagan the Black? He asked with an expectant look. Laughing a little Gandalf nodded, appreciating Aldril's confidence in his word, after a few seconds of silence, Gandalf replied it was Arendil. Aldril's curiosity was piqued at the name Arendil? Who is he? He asked, his mind flooded with fragmented memories of the original Aldril at the mention of Arendil. He had heard that name once when he was a child, you are destined to be just as great as Arendil, said the old woman who cared for him when he was a boy, though he played it down at the time, as he did not know who the old woman was talking about. Now that Gandalf had mentioned that name again a suspicion began to form in his mind could it be that the original Aldril was no ordinary peasant? Oblivious to Aldril's thoughts, Gandalf replied Arendil, the navigator, bearer of the Evening Star, faced the dread Ankalagan in a battle that echoed across the skies and through the annals of history. With courage and determination, Arendil defeated Ankalagan, freeing Middle-earth from the yoke of darkness. Astonished at the new information, Aldril asked expectantly, was he an elf or a man? And what happened to him after he won? Turning to see him, Gandalf gave him a mocking look Haha you have a lot of questions are you very interested in him aren't you? With a nervous smile, Aldril looked down in embarrassment I'm a little excited by the story he admitted frankly besides the old woman who took care of me as a child once mentioned that I would be as big as Arendil, so I'm a little curious. 
Gandalf nodded with a smile and a twinkle in his eye The words of elders often carry significant weight with them, who knows maybe you are destined to be equal or better than him. Gandalf said as he gave him an expectant smile. And to satiate your curiosity, Arendil was descended from men and elves, a half-elf in short, his legacy still lives on through his son Elrond Lord of Rivendell. Aldril POV. I nodded with a smile, I absorbed every word of what Gandalf said this is so wonderful to know, now I regret not reading the books many thoughts ran through my mind at the new knowledge I gained from Gandalf. My thoughts were interrupted by Gandalf's cheerful voice. Look, we have arrived in the Shire. He announced excitedly, pointing ahead with a broad grin on his face. He looked up and my eyes lit up as I took in the view stretching out before me, a tranquil landscape that gave a welcoming feeling, rolling hills covered in green meadows, small houses were visible in the distance, smoke billowing from their chimneys. A sense of anticipation rose within me my journey begins here I murmured as we rode at a slow pace so where do we have to go Gandalf? I asked, as my backside was a little sore from the poor condition of the saddle and I was looking forward to reaching our destination so I could rest a little. To Hobbiton village, it's not too far with that said, we both rode into the Shire. Hi. Here is your favorite author. RMC has a background that will be revealed later. For those who are curious, Arendil is a very broken character. Chapter 8, Chapter 7, Hobbiton General POV As they advanced towards Hobbiton, Gandalf took out his pipe, filled it with some tobacco and then lit it with a bit of magic. Sore in the butt and seeing that they had been moving forward for a few hours now without seeing any sign of Hobbiton, Aldril turned to look at Gandalf impatiently. How long until we get there? My poor ass needs a break from this stupid dilapidated saddle. He expressed in frustration. At his complaint, Shadow Star whinnied indignantly, as if he was claiming to him that he wanted to get rid of this old saddle. Aldril gaze met Shadow Star and he could see the frustration reflected in his eyes. I know, buddy. I promise I'll find you a new saddle and then we'll get rid of this old saddle that stains your noble and beautiful figure Aldril promised sincerely, stroking Shadow Star neck affectionately. The horse whinnied and raised its head in a sign that it liked Aldril words and caresses. Hearing Aldril complaints and his interaction with Shadow Star, Gandalf turned to look at him and with a small laugh replied, Haha, Hobbiton isn't too far away, so you can both hang on a bit longer then exhaled a puff of smoke and turned his gaze to the horizon. After a few minutes in silence, they could both see on the horizon a small village full of small wooden bunker-shaped houses, delicately carved wooden doors, small fences, flowers of all colors, stone paved roads, crystal clear rivers, busy little hobbits, barefoot running along the wooded hillside paths, even hobbit children could be seen playing in the river. At the sight, Gandalf looked at Aldril and with a triumphant face pointed towards the approaching village See, I told you, there wasn't much time left for us to get there. Aldril nodded with a smile, his gaze focused on the beautiful village What a relaxing and beautiful landscape he muttered under his breath. As they entered the village, Aldril felt as if he was in a fairy tale at such scenery. If seeing the landscape through a screen he was amazed, now that he saw it in person, he was in love. Maybe when I grow old in the future, it would be a good choice to come here to retire and settle down he mused, shaking his head at his own thought. It's still too early to think about retiring he reminded himself. His thoughts were interrupted by Gandalf's cheerful voice. It's beautiful, isn't it? When I first came here, I was amazed as well. It is truly beautiful, stated Aldril as he looked excitedly at Hobbiton. Hearing Aldril's response, Gandalf smiled and stated of course, the home of the hobbits is one of the most beautiful places in all of Middle-earth, I always like to visit these jolly little hobbits. After a few minutes, Gandalf took a last puff on his pipe, then turned to Aldril let's go to the market and get rid of this venison as soon as possible, suggested Gandalf it has been exposed to the sun for half a day, and if you wait any longer, the meat will rot and you won't be able to sell it. Hearing Gandalf's words, Aldril nodded you are right, however, I am not familiar with this place where is the market. Come with me, Gandalf replied with a friendly smile, as Aldril followed at a leisurely pace. I hope and get a good price for the meat and wolf pelts, with that money I get I will need to buy provisions, Aldril muttered as he followed Gandalf. Hearing Aldril's murmur, Shadow Star whinnied softly. Yes, friend, I'll also see if they have any new saddles he added, while petting Shadow Star. In the night. Inside a noisy hobbit and tavern Gandalf and Aldril could be seen drinking ah. This orange juice tastes delicious exclaimed Aldril after taking a big gulp of his drink. At Aldril's exclamation, Gandalf laughed and curiously asked why don't you like to drink beer Aldril? 
you're the only man I've seen in a long time who turns down a good mug of ale. Raising his eyebrows at Gandalf's question, Aldril pondered for a moment then replied, I have seen how alcohol makes men stupid. I prefer to keep my mind clear, and be alert at all times. Nodding, Gandalf raised his jar. That's a good mentality, he commented approvingly before raising the mug to his lips and taking a sip of his ale. A moment later, a jovial voice echoed from the neighboring table. Cheers, to the travelers! exclaimed a hobbit with a friendly smile as he raised his mug of ale. Watching as everyone raised their mugs, Aldrin and Gandalf did the same as they smiled. Cheers slash cheers haha! Hey, here's your favorite author. The story for the moment will go at a slow pace, I want to lay the groundwork. Chapter 9, Chapter 8, The Meeting is Approaching. In the Tavern. Cheers slash cheers, haha! Murmurs and merry laughter echoed through the tavern. Gandalf, Aldril, and the hobbits enjoyed their drinks. Wooden mugs clinked enthusiastically, some so loudly that ale splashed, staining the arms and clothes of those who toasted. Glue, glue. The comforting sound of deep gulps was not long in coming, momentarily leaving the tavern silent as Aldril, Gandalf, and the hobbits enjoyed a large gulp of their drinks. Ah! With a synchronized motion, they all lowered their jars and let out a groan of satisfaction that echoed throughout the tavern. Gently placing his jar on the table, Aldril exhaled a long sigh of satisfaction. Hands down the best orange juice I've ever tasted in my entire life. It was such a delicious and refreshing drink that it made a fool of all the other juices he had tasted in the various towns he had passed through. The hobbit crafting of orange juice was very different from what Aldril was used to. While he was used to just a few oranges being squeezed, the hobbit's way of preparation was different, as the orange content they used to prepare the drink was significantly less. Because fresh oranges were used as the main ingredient and several varieties of fruit were added to intensify its flavor and aroma, it was not necessary that only the orange was squeezed. The prepared orange juice was cooled by the process of soaking in cold river water. Thanks to this, the juice reached the maximum of freshness and flavor. With each sip, the flavor became even more vibrant, providing an explosion of freshness that delighted the palate and left a sense of satisfaction with each sip. It was a true delight a showcase of the hobbit's master craftsmanship in the art of brewing. After living like a savage for more than half a month, Aldril missed a good glass of fresh orange juice. Tavern Keeper Another jar of orange juice, please! cried Aldril, as the tavern keeper cheerfully replied. On my way! Hearing Aldril again ask for another glass of orange juice, Gandalf wiped the beer stains from his beard and spoke up laughing. Ha ha! Apparently you liked his orange juice too much for you to have ordered a fourth drink. It's too good, you should understand me Gandalf, it's the first time I've drunk such delicious juice, Aldril said as he took a piece of smoked sausage and popped it into his mouth. In the memories of the original Aldril he remembered always drinking orange juice in the morning in the village of Lindora and now in comparison to the Hobbit juice, the Lindora juice was too sour and had no freshness at all. Now Aldril had a goal in Middle Earth, he needed to taste all the fruit juices this land could offer him he longed to know what a good juice from the elves' domain would taste like. Ha ha! The good drinks the hobbits make are one of the reasons I love coming here. As long as you stay here for a while, you'll find that the atmosphere and the food are so good that you won't want to leave here, Gandalf said as he used a knife and fork to split a piece of smoked meat. And I don't doubt it, as I'm getting charmed by the good atmosphere, but before I think about staying here I have to take enough commissions and make enough money to be able to live a quiet life here, Aldril said agreeing with Gandalf. Although I could do commissions for the hobbits, but I doubt they need an adventurer like me, he said to himself. For the moment, he had no intention of staying in Hobbiton forever, he wanted to adventure throughout Middle-earth first. Listening to Aldril talk about commissions, Gandalf put down the cutlery in his hand, picked up the ale that the waiter had just refilled and took a long sip. Then he smiled and said, Don't worry, the commission I will definitely recommend you for will bring you much riches. Aldril knew what Gandalf was referring to, but he still asked, Gandalf, I would like to ask, who is it that needs the help of an adventurer like me? Gandalf kept moving the knife and fork in his hands, popped a piece of smoked sausage into his mouth and said casually, they are a group of dwarves. Aldril asked with complicity and a bright look, dwarves. Gandalf nodded, yes, if you want this commission, you have to earn the recognition of the leader of the dwarf group. With a bright look, Gandalf looked at Aldril but don't worry too much, you are recommended by me, you just need to show bravery and be patient, dwarves are usually very stubborn. 
Aldrol nodded with an exciting smile and lifted his mug to take a big gulp in that case, I'll have to do my best not to make you look bad nodding towards Aldrol, Gandalf continued to enjoy his drink. As the two left the tavern, they saw that the streets were deserted, it was possibly early morning and the hobbits were already sleeping. Looking at Gandalf who reeked of alcohol, Aldrol smiled so are we going to join the dwarves? Listening to Aldrol, Gandalf paused for a moment, he had arranged a meeting with the dwarves of Turin, he had even come to think that the dwarves had already arrived in Hobbiton and were just waiting to see the signage for the place where they would meet. But now that he could see their somewhat drunken state, Gandalf knew that he was in no fit condition to meet Bilbo Baggins and Thorin, besides the fact that it was already early morning. After thinking for a few minutes, Gandalf turned around and went back to the tavern come, let us go to the tavern, there we can sleep, early tomorrow morning we will head for the meeting place. Chapter 10, Chapter 9, Good Morning Early the next morning. Aldril had finished washing his face, unlike the other times, this time he had a mirror borrowed from the tavern. He held the mirror very carefully and looked at his reflection with a mixture of surprise. This was the first time he could see his face and body properly. He is six feet tall, athletic built, with black hair tied in a ponytail that reached his shoulders with a few unruly strands. The features of his face were sharp and chiseled, with a firm jaw that brought out his masculinity. But what was most striking were his eyes, deep and enchanting, an amber color that seemed to burn with a light of its own. Fuck, I hadn't noticed, but I look like fucking Gerald of Rivia, more specifically Henry Cavill in his portrayal of Gerald no wonder the original Aldrol was very popular in Lindora, he even managed to fuck the wife of the village chief. Shaking his head, Aldrol chuckled a little. This face got the original Aldrol into a lot of trouble, but fuck buddy who would say no to someone who looks like Gerald and even more so with the appearance of Henry Cavill. Although my face is younger compared to Henry. Certainly, this appearance is completely different from his previous life. He wasn't ugly before, but he wasn't so handsome that women would fall in love just looking at him. Perhaps having slightly chubby cheeks took away a few points of attractiveness. Despite his looks, he had had relationships with many women. Being an engineer helped him a lot, there were many who would only go for the money but others went for love, although in the end he ended up dying a bachelor. Anyway, it's no use having a beautiful face in this world if you are not strong enough to protect yourself. Becoming very handsome is a new experience, but the most important thing now is to become strong in order to survive the next wars. Shaking his head, Aldrol put an end to his thoughts and began to dress in his new clothes. He put on a black t-shirt, whose soft and elastic fabric fit his figure perfectly, providing him with comfort. Over this, he pulled on comfortable leather dungarees which offered an extra layer of protection without sacrificing her flexibility. He then donned a black leather breastplate. This provided additional defense against potentially lethal attacks. To complete his attire, Aldrol made sure to equip himself with armor for his legs and arms. The armor pieces were purchased with the proceeds from the sale of the previous day's deer meat and wolf pelt. The meat from yesterday's giant deer was sold for a total of three gold coins. One gold coin in this world is roughly equivalent to 50 silver coins. The drink and feast he invited Gandalf to last night cost him 10 silver coins, plus the purchase of clothing, leather armor, a new saddle, arrows, and supplies. With everything purchased, he had only 10 coins left. It can be said that the money spent was gone like water. Originally, Aldril thought of buying a set of steel wire armor, but gave up after only asking the price. To finalize his outfit, he hung the silver sword at his waist, placed two daggers at his waist, the bow, and arrows on his back. I don't understand how the hobbits would have all this weaponry for sale. Well, that's none of my business. With that said, Aldril left the room he rented the night before. As he walked out of the tavern room, Aldril bumped into a chandelier hanging from the ceiling. Oh ooh. Haha, a good morning, isn't it? A mocking voice rang out, causing Aldril to look up. Oh, it's you? Gandalf. And yes, it is a good morning. Aldril said as he rubbed his forehead and walked hunched over towards Gandalf. Looking at the red mark left by the candlestick, Gandalf sneered, be careful, lest a mere candlestick leave you a bruise. Ha <laughs> ha. Ouch. His taunt was interrupted, as as he turned around he also hit a wooden structure. Ha <laughs> ha, you should be careful too, Gandalf. Ugh. I know that. Anyway, come on. Let's go find someone with that said, they both left the tavern, got on their horses and rode off into the distance. I see your horse seems happy with the new saddle Gandalf said, opening the conversation. So it seems so, 
are you happy big guy? Because I am, it's comfortable and has a nice design Aldrol said as Shadow Star whinnied in agreement. As the two continued to talk, on the horizon they could see the sun begin to rise, giving the indication that it would soon be noon. The two rode through Hobbiton, while waving from time to time to the lively Hobbit children. As they rode on, they crossed two clear streams, several hills, low hills and large expanses of green farmland. Not long after, Aldril saw a short, stocky hobbit sitting on a bench by the side of the road and smoking quietly. There's our last member Gandalf muttered as he rode up to approach the hobbit. Aldril followed Gandalf and as he got closer he could clearly see the little hobbit. Oh but if it isn't our little friend Bilbo Baggins Aldril said to himself, as he gave a smile to the hobbit who saw them approaching. Underscore 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 underscore. Hello my dear orcs, I hope you can support the FIC so that more people can see it. And apparently there are few who like the Lord of the Rings, I've seen DXD FICS that are barely published in one day and you already have thousands of readers even though the FIC is terrible. Well, leaving my thoughts aside, I hope you support me on Patreon so I can upload chapters more often. Chapter 11, Chapter 10, Bilbo Baggins Aldril POV Bilbo Baggins, our beloved protagonist of the Hobbit trilogy. Now I can finally confirm the timeline I am in, my guess was correct and I am at the beginning of the Hobbit plot, Aldril said to himself as he paused to remember a bit of the Hobbit plot. This is the beginning of Bilbo's adventure to reach the Lonely Mountain. If I remember correctly, Gandalf travelled to the Shire to find Bilbo and ask him to join the team of dwarves led by Thorin Oakenshield to take back the Lonely Mountain from the dreaded smog, and he needs Bilbo so that he can retrieve the Ark Stone, or better known as the Heart of the Mountain. Flashback Scene Over sixty years ago, the kingdom beneath the mountain was attacked by the dragon smog. His attack wiped out the entire kingdom of Erebor and burned the entire city in the valley. After the fall of Erebor, the dwarves of Durin had no choice but to flee the lonely mountain and begin to wander to find a place where they could settle. During this period, Thror, the king under the mountain, proposed to reclaim the ancestral place of Moria. With his decision made, he led the surviving tribesmen to Moria, but the orcs had already occupied Moria. This triggered a deadly battle in which many lives were lost, including that of Thror, who was beheaded by the orc leader Azog the Defiler. It was in this battle that Thorin earned the name Oaken Shield, for in the fight against Azog he lost his shield and picked up a piece of oak from the ground to serve as his shield. Because of his bravery in this battle, Thorin Oak Shield was recognized as someone worthy of following by the remaining dwarves of Durin. When King Thror died, Thrain succeeded him as king, however, he went mad and disappeared. Because of this, the young prince Thorin was promoted to king under the mountain. This is the backstory that happened before the plot of the Hobbit began, shaking his head in order to dispel his thoughts, Aldril hastened his ride a bit to catch up with Gandalf. I need to stop doing that, I can't get lost in my thoughts all the time, it can be very dangerous, Aldril said to himself as he caught up with Gandalf. After a few seconds, they both approached the bench where Bilbo was sitting. Dismounting from his horse, Aldril followed Gandalf and stood silently, as he looked at Bilbo, who was still sitting quietly on the bench with his eyes closed and blowing small smoke rings from his pipe. Because a tall shadow was blocking out the comfortable sun, Bilbo opened his eyes and saw two strangers, an old man and a young man, standing outside the fence of his house, looking at him. Bilbo felt a little uncomfortable being looked at by the two people and unconsciously said, Good morning. What's the meaning, are you greeting me, or do you still mean that you feel it's a good morning, Gandalf replied fluently. The questions puzzled Bilbo, who put aside his pipe, with some discomfort at the strange man's words. Thinking of ways to get the strange man to leave him alone, Bilbo thought of the simplest. So he bravely looked the strange man in the eye and said in a friendly manner, all at once, and it's a fine day to smoke some. After Bilbo's reply, Gandalf was silent, looking at Bilbo as he raised an eyebrow and smiled. Watching Gandalf's strange way of approaching little Bilbo, Aldril stepped aside and said nothing as he watched Bilbo's nervous face, which made him chuckle under his breath. Seeing that the two people were silent, Bilbo looked at them for a few seconds and with a nervous tone asked, Do you need anything from me? Hearing Bilbo's question, Gandalf smiled, Perhaps you can help me. I am looking for someone who wants to embark on a great adventure, Gandalf said as he leaned on his staff and looked at the little hobbit. Bilbo was silent for a few seconds as he muttered, Adventure. He shook his head repeatedly. Bilbo dissipated from his thoughts and said, I don't think you are in the right place. Here in Hobbiton we are a simple, quiet people. We are not used to adventures. 
they are unpleasant and delay mealtimes. After his words, Bilbo quickly got up from his bench and walked over to his letterbox to collect his mail. As he picked up his mail, his eyes met those of the other man. Startled slightly by the strange color of the other person's eyes, Bilbo backed away and quickly walked up his stairs and then into his house. When the door closed, Aldril looked at Gandalf, who was looking at him, and laughingly said, I think I frightened our dear hobbit. Well, Aldril, you have an intimidating look about you. You scared more than one hobbit in the tavern, Gandalf said as he shook his head and gave a sigh I couldn't even introduce myself, muttered. I have an intimidating look. But I'm a kind person, does my look really intimidate, big guy? Aldril asked Shadowstar, who shot him a look as if to say not for me. Ignoring Aldril's interaction with his horse, Gandalf crossed the fence of Bilbo's house and approached the gate. Then, with his staff, he began to trace a mark on the door. The glow of Gandalf's staff caught the eye of Aldril, who with a knowing smile crossed the fence, approached Gandalf and asked with amusement, Are you vandalizing the little hobbit's door? I didn't think you were that sort of person, Gandalf. Finishing making the mark, Gandalf turned to look at Aldril and with a helpless sigh said, Just shut up, we have to go. Aren't you going to insist on the little one? There's no need. Someone else will persuade him. We'll come back later. With a mysterious smile, Gandalf returned to his horse. Aldril knew very well what Gandalf was talking about, so he asked no more questions and followed him. After seeing out of his window that the two people were gone, Bilbo let out a sigh of relief. What strange people, Bilbo's mood improved and he began to make his breakfast while humming a tune. In the evening, little Bilbo was quietly preparing his supper. The events that had occurred in the morning had left him a little bewildered, but still putting those thoughts aside, he began to fry a fish until it was cooked through on both sides. Then he added sausage, cheese, and a nice glass of fruity wine. After finishing preparing his dinner, Bilbo sat down and just as he was about to enjoy his dinner, his doorbell, which is a bell, rang. Who is coming to visit at this time of night? He wondered, but after a quick thought, he got up and went to open the door. Hobbits have always been very hospitable and that also applies to our dear Bilbo. Even the people this morning, if they came at this hour, Bilbo would still welcome them. Ding, ding. Coming. Bilbo replied and walked quickly to the door, removed the latch and opened the door, looking bewildered at the dwarf standing outside his door. Dwillin, at your service, the dwarf bowed chivalrously. Bilbo was puzzled by the dwarf's attitude and immediately returned the greeting, Bilbo Baggins at yours. With that said, the little hobbit's nightmare began. Meanwhile, Aldril followed Gandalf back to Bilbo's house. Before they approached the house, a helpless cry rang out, It's my mother's trunk of objects, please don't do that. Hearing Bilbo's cry, Aldril looked at Gandalf and said, Looks like the dwarves have arrived. Ah uh, yes, we must hurry. With a cheerful smile, Aldril quickened his pace, looking forward to his meeting with Thorin and the group of dwarves. Underscore underscore underscore. Hey, hey, here's your favorite author. I'll upload the next chapter until Thursday, since I want to accumulate chapters, after Thursday I'll be uploading a chapter every other day. I hope you'll support me on Patreon where you'll be able to read the advanced chapters. Chapter 12, Chapter 11, Dwarfs General POV There's a lot of noise, they seem to be having a party, don't you think so, Gandalf? Said Aldril as he stood in front of the door of Bilbo's house. Aldril let out a small laugh, as he imagined how angry Bilbo must be. It would certainly be a lot of fun to see an angry hobbit, and more so one as calm as Bilbo. Perhaps it would be, dwarves love to have parties, Gandalf replied, then rang the doorbell, which is a bell. Standing near the door, Aldril saw how the mark left by Gandalf during the day was glowing ever so faintly. But his attention was drawn as he heard an angry shout coming from inside the house. I get no more visitors. Go away and bother someone else. There are already too many dwarves in my dining room at this hour. And if some git made this joke ha. Huh? Let me tell you, it's in very bad taste. The door opened quickly and Bilbo was taken aback for a moment as he looked at the two people outside. Bilbo felt that he had hit a dwarven honeycomb and that only more dwarves would come, he had not expected that those arriving would be the two people who had visited him in the morning. Bilbo already had an idea of what was going on, due to the fact that the dwarves kept talking about a meeting that a wizard named Gandalf had arranged, and seeing these two people, his suspicions increased. Is the old man in the grey robes the one the dwarves are referring to? 
His thoughts were interrupted by a deep but kindly sounding voice. Good evening, Mr. Baggins. My name is Aldril, pleased to meet you and sorry to have startled you this morning. The one who spoke was the person who had those very strange eyes that caused him a lot of fear. But seeing the kind way he introduced himself and the way he apologized, Bilbo realized that he was not so scary and in contrast to the dirty and rude dwarves, this person was more polite and clean. With the good impression Aldril left, Bilbo lowered his fear a little and with a smile said, Oh, don't worry, come in, be my guest. Nodding towards Bilbo, Aldril entered along with Gandalf. Entering Bilbo's house, Aldril could see the group of dwarves. These were about the same size as the hobbits, perhaps a little taller, but what distinguished them was their stocky physique, hair pulled back in braids and their characteristic long beards. Aldril noticed that the group of dwarves were carrying large quantities of food that they had probably taken from Bilbo's storeroom. The food was brought to a long table. Noticing movement at the door, one of the dwarves spotted Gandalf and greeted him cheerfully. Oh, Gandalf! Finally you are here. Hearing one of their companions call Gandalf's name, the others peeked in the doorway and greeted joyfully as well. Gandalf! You took so long. Hello, Gandalf. Good evening, Gandalf. One by one, they greeted Gandalf. Aldril raised an eyebrow at Gandalf's repeated name. They sounded like a broken record, playing only Gandalf's name. Shaking his head in exasperation, Aldril looked at little Bilbo who had an angry look on his face, as he saw that his carpet was full of mud. Aldril could understand the despair Bilbo felt. The clean and quiet house of Bag End was now a mess. Seeing Bilbo's mood, Aldril patted him on the shoulder in sympathy. Having greeted Gandalf, the dwarves saw Aldril and spoke in unison. Who is he? Who is he? Who are you? Hearing how several dwarves started asking questions in unison, Aldril imagined a group of bearded kindergartners asking who he was. The image he imagined almost made him laugh. Watching as Aldril held in his laughter, Gandalf shook his head in exasperation. He was getting an idea of what Aldril might be imagining. This is the adventurer I met on the way. As soon as Gandalf finished speaking, there was a knock at the door. Hearing it, all the dwarves fell silent. Gandalf, who was standing near the door, turned and opened it. On the other side of the door stood a dwarf taller than the others, with a well-groomed beard, a coat of mail, a cloak and a luxurious fur coat. Gandalf, you said the house where we would meet would be easy to find, I got lost twice. If it weren't for the mark on the door, I wouldn't have found it. The tall dwarf stepped gracefully into Bag End's house. As he entered, he removed his cloak and watched as the other dwarves bowed their heads in respect. Ignoring the dwarf who entered, Bilbo focused his attention as he listened to what the dwarf said. Mark? There is no mark on that door. I painted it a week ago. Closing the door, Gandalf replied, Yes there is a mark, I drew it in the morning. When Gandalf spoke, Bilbo was stunned for a few seconds. No wonder all these dwarves came to his house. This whole mess was Gandalf's fault. Quickly, Bilbo moved to Gandalf's side and shot him an angry look. Looking at Bilbo's angry face, Aldril patted him and spoke in a low voice. I told him not to vandalize your door, but I think you made him angry by not letting him come forward. In surprise, Bilbo looked even more angrily at Gandalf and asked. Is that true? Looking at Bilbo's angry face, Gandalf ignored him and said. Bilbo Baggins, Aldril, then he waved his hand and pointed chivalrously at the dwarf. Let me introduce you to the leader of the company, Thorin Oakenshield. After Gandalf finished introducing him, Thorin Oakenshield immediately walked over and looked at Bilbo, who had been recommended by Gandalf. So, this is the hobbit. Surrounding him, Thorin began to ask. Mr. Baggins, do you have any combat experience? Excuse me. Bilbo asked puzzled. Axe or sword, which weapon do you prefer? Thorin continued to speak, though it was in a calm tone, Aldril could tell that Thorin spoke in derision. The dwarf prince of Durin, who can now also be called the king under the mountain, can easily distinguish someone who has no combat experience at all, hence his mockery towards Bilbo. Well I have a lot of chess experience, but I don't understand why you are asking me this. He asked sincerely, although he had some guesses, Bilbo still couldn't fully understand. What I figured. Mockingly, Thorin turned to look at the other dwarves and said. He looks more like a shopkeeper than a looter. Crossing his arms, Thorin laughed and the other dwarves joined in his laughter as well. After the laughter died down, Thorin focused his attention on Aldrin and began to look him over from head to toe, 
noting his attire, longsword, and bow. Thorin said, This one does look like a warrior, but Gandalf, I remember you saying that my team only needed one raider, didn't you? Thorin looked at Gandalf with a calm expression, but in his tone a slight annoyance could be heard. Yes, I said so, but my intuition told me that, if I didn't bring him, I might regret it later, and you better than anyone know better than to underestimate a wizard's intuition, Gandalf spoke as he took a puff on his pipe. Remaining silent for a few seconds, Thorin asked, So, Mr. Aldril, what can you do? As Thorin spoke, all the other dwarves focused their attention on Aldril. In a relaxed manner, Aldril replied, I am easily one of the best archers in Middle-earth. I doubt that even the elves compare to me. As well as being an excellent tracker, as well as very efficient at killing monsters such as trolls, orcs and such. Upon hearing Aldril's self-proclaimed abilities, some of the dwarves nodded approvingly, while others looked skeptical. Thorin frowned slightly. Don't you think it sounds very arrogant to say that you are one of the best archers, Mr. Aldril? Besides, we already have an archer with us, Thorin said as he looked at Keeley. I don't doubt he's good, but he can't compare to me, Aldril spoke calmly. And it was true, the original Aldril was easily one of the best archers. Hence his bow skill was level 2. If at that level he could outperform an elf, he couldn't imagine how good he would be at having the skill at 3. Listening to Aldril's words, the dwarves looked annoyed, except for one who had a long white beard. This dwarf was giving Aldril a calm look. Hearing how confident Aldril sounded, Thorin was a bit annoyed, but he didn't show it. Is that so? Then, Mr. Aldril can give us a demonstration. With a smile, Aldril spoke. Of course I can demonstrate, how about this? I show you how good I am, and if I live up to your expectations, you'll take me on your team. Hearing Aldril's proposal, Thorin looked at the group of dwarves, seeing how excited they were at the bet. Thorin said, Keely, come. Hearing his name, Keeley quickly approached Thorin. Keeley is the best archer we have. Compete with him, and if you manage to beat him, I will gladly welcome you to the team. At Thorin's words, Aldril smiled and looked at Gandalf, who was also giving him a knowing smile, as they had both planned this. Gandalf told him that dwarves were stubborn and distrustful of others. Therefore, the easiest way to approach a dwarf was to show how strong you are, beat them in a competition or win them a bet, as dwarves love to compete and gamble. This was demonstrated both in the Hobbit movie and in the competitive relationship Gimli had with Legolas. With that said, Aldril and the others left Bag End, going to the nearby forest, where Aldril and Keeley would compete. Even the angry Bilbo set off with the others, as Gandalf pulled him to follow them. Hey there! It's your favorite author. I've been reading the Lord of the Rings wiki, and my goodness! I've been getting a lot of ideas about our protagonist's origin, so I hope you like what I have planned. Remember to support me on Patreon, where I'm uploading advanced chapters. Chapter 13, Chapter 12, Welcome. General POV. There is very little entertainment in this world, let alone at night. At most, it would just be getting drunk in taverns and staying up late at night drinking. Therefore, the competition between Aldril and Keeley excited the group of dwarves, who laughed and cheered for Keeley to beat the pretentious human. The dwarves were a bit angry with Aldril for his arrogance in claiming to be the best archer in all of Middle-earth and claiming that Keeley could not compare to him. Certainly, dwarves are short-tempered and, at the same time, simple. These characteristics also mean that, as long as you don't offend them in a serious way, they are still willing to be reasonable. Their simplicity was demonstrated by putting aside their anger at the excitement of the competition and reasonableness by understanding that Aldril did not offend them in any way. As the group moved forward, the dwarves began to place their bets on who would win between Aldril and Keeley. Because the dwarves knew Keeley best, most of the bets were in his favor. You haven't bet yet, Balin, don't you trust Keeley? Asked Philly, as he was a bit puzzled at Balin's silence on who he would bet on. He was sure he would bet on Keeley, but he was surprised to hear Balin's words. Didn't you hear what Gandalf said? The boy is an adventurer, and to be one you need to be very strong, Philly. Over the years there have been very few who call themselves adventurers, and every one of them was an extraordinary person. The most famous adventurer is a woman named Tindomil, daughter of Elros, the first king of Númenor. In Erebor we had several books that told what that woman was capable of, and seeing her confident attitude, her claim to be an adventurer, the boy left a good impression on me. That's why my bet goes for Aldril. Come on, Bali, there was no need for all that tale, 
said Philly, dizzy before Balan's peroration. For him, reading was not very important, he preferred his combat practice, so it always bored him to talk to Balan, since he prolonged the conversations unnecessarily. But even though most dwarves are bored with reading, that doesn't stop them from appreciating knowledge. Listening to everything Balan said, some dwarves bet in favor of Aldril, among them Gloin, Bayron and Boffer. Disgusted to see that they did not bet on Keeley, Philly turned to Gandalf and Bilbo. So you two, who will you bet on? At Philly's question, Gandalf pulled out a bag of money. My money's on Aldril, Gandalf said, receiving the bag. Figli looked at Bilbo. I won't bet on anyone, I don't have any money at the moment he said. Shrugging his shoulders Philly joined the other dwarves, and they put the bets together. Almost everyone bet, with the exception of Thorin. It wasn't that he disliked betting, it was just that he took this confrontation very seriously and didn't want to make it look like a simple gambling game. As the dwarves gathered the money bags, Aldril looked at Balin and with shining eyes spoke. Mr. Balin, if you don't mind, after the competition, I would love to hear about Tindomil's adventures. Listening to what Aldril said, Balin nodded with a smile, he always enjoyed talking about all the knowledge he had learned. Seeing Balin's nod, Aldril looked at Keeley so how do you want to compete? Looking up to see Aldril, Keeley said, we can make an arrow shot at the trees and see who can hit the most arrows in the same place. At that moment, the sound of birds suddenly came from the forest. Aldril's eyes lit up, he turned to look at Keeley and immediately said, what if we better compete by hunting birds? The night adds more difficulty. After hearing this, Keeley immediately looked towards the dark forest, confidently nodded, I agree. Then whoever kills the most birds is the one who will win. Hearing how they will compete, all the dwarves cheered with laughter and support for the two. Come on Keeley, you can do it. Come on Aldril, I bet on you, don't let me down. Come on Keeley, make Gloin regret not betting on you. Aldril and Keeley couldn't agree on who would go first. They each took the bows and arrows from their backs and aimed at the birds that, even though it was night, were still flying through the forest. Because the tail feathers of the arrows of the two were different, it would be very easy to distinguish whose arrow was whose. The sky was dark, the moonlight very briefly illuminated the dark night, the stars were shining in the sky. At this moment Aldril and Keeley stretched their bows with calm expressions. The group of dwarves behind remained silent, fearful that making noise would throw them both out of focus. They were so close to each other that they could hear each other's breathing. Since it was a competition, the two tried to be as careful as possible. Suddenly, a bird song was heard, and at that moment an arrow shot out. She's thwack. The first bird fell. Keeley was shocked, as he had barely drawn his bow when Aldril had already fired. Most impressively, Aldril was able to calculate the trajectory. Before Keeley could react, Aldril fired three shots in a row very quickly. She's 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 she's. The sound of three birds falling was heard in the silent night. Behind, the dwarves looked at Aldril with a different look. They could not even see the birds, and Aldril had already killed four. This left them very impressed. Aldril's demonstration of skill was normal, his bow skill is level two. That shows how capable the original Aldril was. The fact that he could shoot easily in the dark was because he could see clearly in the dark. At first he thought it was a mutation, but when he discovered he was in Middle-earth he attributed it to an inherited ability. He didn't know who his parents were, but he thanked them for inheriting his skill with the bow and his clarity in seeing at night. The sound of arrows being shot rang out for a while. Keeley, a little nervously, began to shoot. He was nervous because his uncle the dwarf King Thorin was present, and he could feel his gaze. After a while, seeing that they ran out of arrows, Thorin concluded the contest. Dwilin, Nori, Ori, go count the bird carcasses. At Thorin's command, the aforementioned dwarves hurried into the forest. Aldril did not distrust that the dwarves would cheat. Gandalf had already told him a little of what the dwarves were like, and had mentioned that they were honorable when competed or gambled with, so they would not cheat. It wasn't long before the dwarves returned with arrows and some dead birds. Seeing the dwarves approaching, Thorin spoke. So, how did it go? With a somewhat frustrated look on his face, Dwilin said, all in all, twenty dead birds on Aldril's side and only six on Keeley's side. Hearing what Dwilin said, Keeley lowered his head. He approached Thorin and in a low voice said, I lost, sorry Thorin, Aldril's archery skills are better than mine. Patting him on the shoulder, Thorin spoke with a smile, Don't worry Keeley, I'm not upset. After comforting Keeley, 
he approached Aldril and in a calm voice, but at the same time full of expectation, he spoke, A bet is a bet, welcome to the team, Mr. Aldril. Noticing that Thorin was looking at him differently, Aldril gave a cordial bow It will be a pleasure to assist you on your journey, your highness. Satisfied at Aldril's attitude, Thorin extended his hand and the two shook hands. Let's go back, I haven't had supper yet and I'm starving, said Thorin turning around, and all the others followed him to Bilbo's house, while they divided the amount won from the bets. As they walked back, Aldril approached Keeley, who was a little sad at his loss. You're not bad with a bow, you're much better than all the people I've come across. You don't need to console me Aldril, I'm not sad, you just beat me because it's night time, so you have to compete again. Faced with Aldril's friendly behavior, Keeley realized that he was nice, he is one of those people who have a very good vibe and with whom it is very easy to form a friendship. Giving him a pat on the shoulder, Aldril smiled at him rest assured we will compete again. Watching out of the corner of his eye as Aldril and Keeley began to get along, Thorin nodded to himself. Someone who can get along with dwarves in such a short time speaks well of his person. Hey! Here's your favorite author. Enjoy the chapter, remember to support me on Patreon where I'm uploading advanced chapters and where I'll upload the first chapters of my upcoming FICS. Now, enjoy the chapter. Chapter 14, Chapter 13, Meeting Gandalf POV As I watched Thorin welcome Aldril to join the expedition, I let out a sigh of relief, fortunately. I told him how to deal with the dwarves. Gamble or compete with them and, if you manage to win, you can easily have a good relationship with them. In the end, Aldril defeated Keeley in the archery competition, and I was very surprised to see someone so skilled with a bow. I know many elves and I can say that none have such skill. Who would come closest to Aldril's skill would be Legolas, the sylvan elf and son of King Thranduil. Now, my concern is that Thorin will not accept Bilbo. Although I know he will take my recommendation into consideration, in the end it is Thorin who will decide whether Bilbo joins the expedition. Looking at little Bilbo, who began to put on a sad face as he watched all the dwarves return home, but despite his anger, he was still hospitable to us. No doubt he is the right person, the adventurous took blood inside him will be what drives him to follow us, I thought as I watched the little hobbit taking quick steps to get to his home first. But first here's your share of the bet, Gandalf. Keeley said to me as he tossed me a bag of money. Ha, it's good to gamble with dwarves. Bag end. Some dwarves are still not recovering from their bad mood at having lost in their bets, while others enter in high spirits and head straight for Bilbo's food store. Seeing this, poor Bilbo just ducked his head and sighed. Ah, never mind now, at least I'll be cordial to them. By the way, Gandalf won money on his wager, didn't he? I'll charge the meal to him. Hey, wait. That's my mother's cutlery, be careful. After all the preparations, the feast continues. Bilbo's long table was now filled with all kinds of food, smoked fish, bacon, smoked sausages, smoked ham, cheese, white bread, dried tomatoes, apples, mushrooms and more than a dozen kinds of food. In addition, various types of red wine and fruit wine. Seeing all the amount of fancy food and silverware, Aldril had some insight into Bilbo's background. This was not a stockpile of food that ordinary families might have. I didn't remember Bilbo's family being rich, Aldril thought as he took a seat next to Gandalf. After everything was prepared, the group of dwarves sat down and began to eat, or rather, they began to devour the food. Aldril knew from the plot of the movie that this meal would be the last hearty meal they would have, as after they left Hobbiton they would have many hardships. So he needed to make the most of the whole feast, smoked fish, bacon, country ham, smoked sausages, cheese. Aldril feasted, though unlike the dwarves, he had decency in eating and did not eat like a savage. While Aldril was enjoying his meal, the dwarves began to sing loudly. As they sang, a dwarf resembling Keeley, with blonde hair and several braids in his beard and hair, climbed up on the table and began to shake his ass. The dwarves, upon seeing Philly dance, began waving knives and forks, while banging on the table and creating rhythm to keep Philly dancing. Fortunately, Aldril had just finished eating, as such a display of a dwarf shaking his backside made him uncomfortable. Sipping a large glass of fruit wine, Aldril turned to look at Gandalf, who was laughing and cheering Philly on. You dwarves sure know how to have fun, Aldril said, catching Gandalf's eye. When you get acquainted with them, you'll have fun, Gandalf said as he raised his glass and took a big gulp. They are very noisy, but actually not bad. I think as long as I'm with them, I'll never get bored. 
As they watched the dwarves dance and enjoy themselves, Aldril asked Gandalf, By the way, Gandalf, haven't you told me what the purpose of these dwarves' expedition is? Even though he already knew what the expedition was for, he still asked, just to have a chat with Gandalf. Hearing Aldril's question, Gandalf shook his head. This is not the time to explain. Let Thorin finish eating and he will explain. The feast lasted a while. After they finished eating, everyone cleared the table and sat down this time without making much noise. Aldril knew that soon the serious talk about the expedition would begin. And he was right, foreseeing that everyone was already seated, Balin spoke up. By the way, Thorin, what happened at the Aird Luin meeting, did everyone go? Thorin nodded with a smile. Yes, envoys from the Seven Kingdoms, all of them. The dwarf Dwilin, hearing what Thorin said, quickly rushed to ask. And what did the dwarves of the Iron Hills say, will Dane help us? Thorin shook his head and his smile disappeared, then spoke seriously. They will not come. They say this is our adventure, ours alone. At that moment Bilbo interrupted, adventure? They're going on an adventure. At the interruption, Thorin was silent. That silence was broken by Gandalf, who kindly said, Bilbo, my dear friend, would you be so kind as to bring a candle? Handing the candle to Gandalf, he placed it on the table and then took out a scroll and unfolded it, on which mountains, rivers and forests were clearly drawn, clearly it was a map. In the far east, over mountains and rivers, through forests and wastelands, stands a mountain, the lonely mountain, Gandalf said as he glanced at all the dwarves. Yes, Oin has interpreted the signs and the signs indicate that the time has come, said Gloin. You have seen ravens fly back to the mountain, as the prophecy tells us when the ancestral birds return to Erebor the reign of the beast will end, said Oin complimenting what Gloin said. Beast? What beast? Bilbo to one side felt drawn and asked suddenly. It is a reference to Smog the Terrible, the greatest and chief calamity of our age. He flies and spits fire, he has teeth like razors, claws like hooks, he is very fond of precious metals, Boffer said as he smoked from his pipe and exaggerated his tone to frighten Bilbo. At Boffer's description, Ori stood up dramatically and exclaimed, I am not afraid of him, I am ready. I'll make him taste the hard metal of the dwarves and shove it up his ass. Don't think about it, it would be very difficult, even with the support of an army, not to mention that we are only a dozen, we are not the best and not the smartest either, Balin said, throwing cold water on Ori's fantasies, while with his last comment he looked at Dwilin. Hey, what do you mean, who are you calling stupid? We're not stupid. As the dwarves began to fight, Philly stood up and caught everyone's attention. We may be few in number, but we are all warriors, all of us, down to the last dwarf. Backing up his brother, Keeley said, Have you already forgotten that we have an adventurer and a wizard on our team? Gandalf has killed hundreds of dragons. Uh, no, wait, I wouldn't say, Gandalf said quickly, as he spoke so that all attention was directed to Aldril. And you, Aldril, would you be able to slay the dragon? Looking at Gandalf, who made all the dwarves turn their attention to him, Aldril had a small twitch in his eye. Sure, I've hardly killed bears, though I guess I was wrong to lie that I've killed trolls, Aldril thought. Looking at Aldril, who remained silent, the dwarves began to despair, and just as they were about to start rushing him for an answer, Balin spoke up. By bearing the title of adventurer it means you are strong, so tell me, boy, would you lose to Smog? At Balin's words, something stirred inside Aldril, and with a confidence he didn't know where it came from, he said something that would make the dwarves look at him with white eyes. Nah, I'd win. Hey, here's your favorite author. Our Aldril is arrogant, because he thinks he will be able to do better on the journey and there is an important moment coming up about Aldril's identity, who do you think his parents are and his lineage? Give me your predictions. By the way, I was reading a Chinese novel in which the MC is reincarnated in Naruto's world as the Uzumaki Patriarch so he recreates Ozashiagakura with Bleach as Godi I-13, but my goodness. The captains are nerfed to the max. How come the rakage is at Yuriuaki's speed level? How does the third Hokage force be Akia to use his Bankai in their fight? Chapter 15, Chapter 14, The Way Forward Bag and Dining Room As he confidently declared that he would defeat Smog, Aldril's hair took on a small glow, as if the dark night was illuminated by many stars. This was all in a small fraction of a second and hardly anyone noticed, except for Gandalf, who looked with a deep gaze at Aldril. That's the spirit. So spoken. Yes, 
there is no need to be afraid of the dragon. At Aldril's confidence, the opinion of the dwarves was divided in two, the young dwarves like Keeley and Philly, who are passionate, impulsive, and seem to fear nothing, then there are the dwarves like Balin, who were more experienced and had lived through the tragedy of Smog's attack, so they were more cautious. The boy may be capable, but I doubt it of you, thinking yourselves invincible is not bravery, it's just stupidity. Balin said, chiding Keeley and Philly, who were eager to face Smog. Hey, who are you calling stupid? I'm talking about you guys. We're not stupid. Yes. The only stupid one here is Dwalin. What did you say, you idiot? Seeing the two dwarves with opposing views arguing louder and louder, a possible conflict was about to happen, and if someone didn't put a stop to it, the dwarves would surely start a fight. Looking at Thorin's increasingly angry face, Aldril silently moved his chair back a little, only to bump into Gandalf, who had also done the same. It was at that moment that Thorin stood up as he slammed his hand on the table. Enough! He exclaimed, causing all the dwarves who had already risen to sit back down and lower their heads as if they had been scolded. If we could interpret those signs, don't you think others could as well? Said Thorin as he looked at each of the dwarves with a serious look. Rumors are spreading, the dragon smog has not appeared in sixty years. There are those who look to the eastern mountain, judging, thinking, gauging the danger. Perhaps the great treasure of our people is now unprotected. Shall we do nothing while others seize what belongs to us? Or shall we seize this chance to take back Erebor? Thorin's strong words motivated the dwarves, causing them to put aside their divided opinions. For that very reason, they rose up and wholeheartedly supported their king. But even though the dwarves were motivated, one in particular thought with a cool head and made a comment that silenced the already excited dwarves. Did you forget that the gate is locked? There is no entrance to the mountain, Balin said with a sad tone while shaking his head. Not that he wanted to throw cold water on his motivation, he was just talking about the expedition's biggest problem. Erebor is a underground city inside the mountain, the ancient kingdom of the dwarves now lay empty, its main gate sealed by the fierce attack of the dragon smog. If they did not manage to open the impenetrable defenses that guarded the entrance, all the efforts of the expedition would be in vain. After Balin finished speaking, Thorin bent his head in thought, Certainly, that was the biggest problem they would face. While Thorin was thinking and the other dwarves were silent, Aldril saw Gandalf rise from his bench and in a low voice speak. That, my dear Balin, is not quite true. At that moment, they all saw Gandalf pull out a key, long as a grown man's forefinger and thick as a thumb. How did you get that? Thorin looked at the key in Gandalf's hand and muttered. I received it from your father's hand, Thrain, for safekeeping, and now it shall be yours. Gandalf said, speaking slowly, as he reached out and handed the key to Thorin. At that moment, Philly saw how Thorin looked at the key as if it were the most beautiful treasure he had ever received. If there is a key, it means there must be a door, he said in an excited tone. You are right, Gandalf nodded as he pointed to some runes on the side of the map and continued, these runes mention a secret passage to the lower halls. There is another entrance, an excited Keeley spoke as he put his hand on his brother's shoulder. At Keeley's comment, Gandalf looked up and said, Yes, if we find it, but the dwarven doors are invisibly locked. As he tapped his finger lightly on the runes, he continued, The answer is hidden somewhere on this map and I have not yet been able to find it. But others in Middle-earth can. The task I have in mind requires us to remain hidden and have great courage, but if we are careful and skillful, I think we can accomplish it. Then that's why we need a thief. Seeing that his intervention or opinion was not needed, Aldril opened his system, as he was curious as to how much the world exploration had gone up having visited the Shire and met several important people. To Rum. The sound similar to when you open the menu in the classic Resident Evil game rang out. Name, Aldril. Race, Human Slash. Attribute Points, Zero. Attribute, Strength Plus, Constitution Plus, Agility Plus, Mentality Plus. Skill, Universal Language. Military Survival LV2, Wolf School Style LV1, Archery LV2. Talent, Good Fingers, Special Skill. World Exploration, 0.4%. Looking at the data that appeared in front of him, Aldril was pleasantly surprised to see that World Exploration had increased to 0.4%. The numbers proved that Aldril's guess on how to increase World Exploration was correct. The current progress of World Exploration is closely related to the plot characters and all the locations in Middle-earth. This gave the green light for Aldril, in the future, 
to explore all that Middle-earth has to offer. Just as Aldril was reflecting on the places unexplored by the movies and books, an event brought his attention. Gandalf, who had already sat down, suddenly stood up and, under the light of the fire in the fireplace, his originally tall shadow immediately became extremely large and began to envelop the entire room. Enough. I have told you that Bilbo Baggins is a thief and therefore he is one. The seemingly calm voice was extremely loud to the ears of those present. As soon as the words fell, all the dwarves were shocked. Gandalf has always been said to be a kind wizard, but none of the dwarves imagined that the kind wizard could be so terrifying when he was angry. Even Thorin was surprised as well, this was the first time he had ever seen an angry wizard and it certainly surprised him. Aldril, who was originally watching his system, was also surprised by Gandalf's little anger. He immediately dismissed the system in front of him and turned his full attention back to the meeting. All hobbits have very nimble feet. What's more, they can pass unnoticed when they want to, and while the dragon knows the scent of dwarves and humans very well, the hobbit's scent will be unknown to him, which gives us a distinct advantage. You asked me to find the fourteenth member of the company and I chose Mr. Baggins. He is much more than meets the eye, he has much more to offer than you imagine, even if he does not know it himself, Gandalf said as he looked at Thorin in a serious manner. You must trust me this time, Thorin. Gandalf sat back down, and Aldril could see how important a wizard's words could be, for the dwarves he was against were silent. Very well, we will do as you say. Thorin looked at Gandalf for a few seconds and being convinced by Gandalf, reluctantly welcomed Bilbo. At that moment, Thorin turned his gaze to Aldril and in a serious manner said, Mr. Aldril, from what I heard from Balin, adventurers are rare these days and each one who holds the title of adventurer has accomplished great feats that have been recorded over the years. As the fifteenth member of the expedition, I hope and you can help us deal with the dragon. At Thorin's words, Aldril was silent for a few seconds, then stood up and raised his hand with a clenched fist. Of course, I'll help you, we have to kill that damn lizard. Now you're talking. Fine, let's go get that bastard. Yes. Let's show him what we're capable of. All the dwarves rose to their feet at Aldril's statement, even Gandalf gave Aldril a look of approval, he knew he was not wrong to bring this adventurer with him. The one who was most pleased with his statement was Thorin, who immediately looked at Balin. Take out the contract, Balin, someone else needs to be added. I've been reading the wiki and informing myself about everything related to Middle-earth and wow, it's too much lore. Implementing part of the books in my FIC to give more logic to what will happen. And by the way, someone said that the romance with Toril is ridiculous, since she only appeared in the movies and I get it, since nothing is mentioned about her, that's why I've taken it upon myself to ask for your vote. Toril as a romantic interest or Eowyn with the fact that she is human and sooner or later will die, so take your pick. And those who have seen the clues, will know why I don't put Arwen. Chapter 16, Chapter 15, The Story Begins General POV Pulling out the contract, Balin pulled a quill from the backpack he had with him and wrote Adventurer underneath the word thief. The word thief was already established from the beginning, as this would originally be the contract Bilbo would be given. Due to the addition of Aldril, some changes were made to the commissions. Originally, the commission promised for Bilbo in the contract was one fourteenth of the treasure, but now with Aldril, it was changed to one fifteenth. As for Aldril's commission, Thorin stated that he would also be given one fifteenth. As to why it would only be one fifteenth and not one sixteenth, it was because Thorin would not participate in the sharing of the treasure, and it was logical, since in its own right it was Thorin's treasure. Aldril knew this, so he did not ask any questions when he saw the amount set. Taking the amended contract, Thorin passed it to Aldril. Quickly reading the contract, Aldril didn't see anything suspicious, perhaps the part where it said that if he died, his share would be divided among all the dwarves. But, shrugging, he simply signed. Very well, Mr. Aldril, with this you are now officially part of the expedition. I hope and do not disappoint me, Thorin said as he gave him an expectant look. Don't worry, I won't let you down, Aldril replied as he signed his name in cursive. After signing, he passed the contract to Bilbo, who was still stunned at what was happening. Like Aldril, Bilbo quickly read the contract as he muttered. The company is not responsible for injuries sustained including lacerations A and D, being stunned for a moment, Bilbo looked at the dwarves and in disbelief said, incineration. Oh yes, they can melt you in the blink of an eye, Boffer said calmly, playing it down. At that comment, Bilbo began to hyperventilate, he began to feel extremely dizzy, 
which is why he rested his arms on his knees. At Bilbo condition, Balin, a little concerned, approached him. Are you all right, lad? Hearing Balin's question, Bilbo straightened up and, despite feeling extremely dizzy, looked at Balin and in a halting voice muttered, Yes, I'm fine, just a little dizzy. After seeing Bilbo in that state, Boffer took the opportunity to continue to tease Bilbo so he could be amused at the hobbit's suffering. It's like a furnace with wings, a glow, a lot of pain and puff, you turn to ashes. At that moment, Bilbo began to stagger. Oh, really? He said and then fainted. Seeing poor fainting Bilbo, Gandalf shot an annoyed look at the dwarf. You didn't help at all, Boffer. Shaking his head in exasperation, Aldril went over to the fainting Bilbo, picked him up and placed him in an armchair that the dwarves kindly brought from Bilbo room. After a while, Bilbo awoke, taking a few minutes to relax as he drank some tea that Aldril had prepared for him. As he relaxed, Gandalf came over and tried to convince him to join the expedition. It's all right, Gandalf, just let me relax a bit. Smoking a little from his pipe, Gandalf gave him a deep look and said, You've had plenty of time to relax already. Tell me, since when did your mother's tablecloths and dishes become so important to you? I remember a young hobbit who was always running into the forest, looking for the elves, the young man who came back in the night full of mud and twigs and flies, a young hobbit who would have died to find out what lay beyond the shire, Gandalf pointed to the horizon as he gave Bilbo a quiet look. The world is not in your books and maps, Bilbo, it lies out there. At Gandalf's words, Bilbo was silent, searching for words to refute Gandalf, but thinking of none, he came up with the simplest, I can't just go out like this and disappear, I'm a Baggins A and D. And you're a took too, Gandalf interrupted him as he grabbed the portrait of a hobbit from Bilbo's wall. Yes. I knew that. Very well, then let me tell you that, at the Battle of the Green Fields, your great-great-grandfather fought the goblins, struck so hard with his club that he blew the goblin king's head off, the head shot ninety yards through the air and fell down a rabbit hole. Thus he won that battle and also invented golf at the same time. Listening to Gandalf's story, Aldril raised an eyebrow and a question popped into his thoughts, does golf exist in Middle-earth? He shrugged and looked at Bilbo's excited face. He seemed to be fascinated by Gandalf's story, so much so that he puffed out his chest with pride and began to consider whether he should go with the expedition, but it did not last long, for in the next moment he reasoned a little and found what Gandalf told ridiculous. I think you made up the story. Well, Bilbo, good stories deserve a good ending. You'll have a story or two when you get back, Aldril said as he put one of his hands on his shoulder. At Aldril's words, Bilbo was a little moved and in a trembling voice said, can you promise me that I will come back? At their silence Bilbo rose to his feet. What I thought. I am sorry, Gandalf, but I will not sign the contract, I am not the hobbit you are looking for. With hurried steps he made his way to his room to sleep. It takes a lot of courage to rush headlong into a dangerous adventure, and Bilbo was not counting on that courage just yet. Late at night. The dwarves who had been noisy all day began to yawn, tomorrow they had to get up early and set out on a very long journey. Seeing that Bag End was very small and there were no extra beds, they had no choice but to make makeshift beds and sleep on the floor. Fortunately, it was still summer and hot, so it didn't matter if they slept on the floor, as it provided coolness and allowed them to sleep comfortably. Noticing that there was no more room, Aldril took a blanket from Bilbo, sat down on a bench in the dining room and leaned against the small table. After a few minutes, he fell asleep. Early in the morning. When Aldril awoke, he saw some dwarves just waking up and others beginning to pack their things to leave Bilbo's house. Getting up and stretching, Aldril went through his morning routine of washing his face and part of his body in Bilbo's bath. After a few minutes, Aldril emerged from Bag End and saw the group of dwarves loading their things onto their ponies. Aldril had a sight that caused him to chuckle a little, as all the ponies were around Shadow Star, as if they were praising him. The funniest thing was that he saw his pony looking up proudly, as if demonstrating his social status. All right, big guy, stop behaving like a young Chinese master, it's time to have our first adventure, Aldril said as he spanked Shadow Star, who whinnied in disgust at the spanking, but still bent down for Aldril to climb on him. The behavior between horse and man caught the attention of one of the dwarves standing nearby as he loaded things onto his pony. Your horse is very curious, he won't let anyone near him, even when we spoke to the ponies, they gave him a look as if asking permission to leave his side, said Balin as he gave Shadow Star a contemplative look. At Balin's comment, Aldril looked at him and smiled, 
he is very special, this big fellow, according to Gandalf, he is a descendant of Fularof, so he is one of the best horses in Middle-earth. Aldril boasted with pride in his voice. He was rarely boastful, but seeing how several dwarves looked at his horse with admiration, he could not resist the temptation to brag. Hearing what Aldril said, Balin raised one of his eyebrows. Fularof? So what's he doing around these parts, shouldn't he be in Rohan? I have no idea how he ended up in these parts, but what I can tell you is that apparently this big guy and I were meant to be together, Aldril said. At Aldril's words, Shadow Star whinnied and raised his head, looking at Balin as if he were a simple peasant talking to royalty. Looking at his horse's attitude, Aldril muttered under his breath. Seriously, big guy, you're so arrogant sometimes. Whinnying, Shadow Star looked at Aldril like he was an idiot. Of course he had to be arrogant, he's one of the best horses in Middle-earth. Not just anyone they accept as mates. Don't look at me like I'm an idiot. Balin, who was lost in thought, chuckled a little at the relationship this young adventurer had with his horse. After a few minutes, Gandalf came out of Bag End and approached his horse, who had his head down as he fell in behind Aldril's horse. Raising an eyebrow at how meek his horse was behaving, Gandalf figured his behavior was due to Aldril's horse being nearby. Shrugging his shoulders, Gandalf began to pack his things and place them on his horse's sides. Seeing that Gandalf went out alone and was in a gloomy mood, Aldril could understand why he was like this. Why do you think Bilbo doesn't want to come with us? Said Aldril as he approached Gandalf. Gandalf continued to put his things away without turning to look at Aldril. I think it takes a lot of courage for an ordinary person to leave everything behind and go on an adventure with us. Nodding, Aldril said something that made Gandalf's mood improve. I trust Bilbo will come, who knows. Maybe he'll get up and pluck up the courage to go with us. Seeing Gandalf nod with a smile, Aldril said no more and looked expectantly at the horizon. So begins my journey, he said to himself. Seeing that Bilbo did not leave his house, Thorin did not wait for him any longer and ordered everyone to start moving forward. The contract had been left on the dining table, as if to imply that as long as Bilbo did not take too long, he could accompany them on this adventure. In the forest. Riding quietly, the group of dwarves began to talk about Bilbo, Boffer, the dwarf who loves to wear a fur hat, was the first to speak. I bet Mr. Baggins won't come because he's afraid, which of you dares to bet with me? Hey, we all know Mr. Baggins isn't coming, it's unfair of you to gamble. Said Philly. At Philly's comment, some of the dwarves nodded. That's right, that's right. At that point, Aldril smiled and said, I bet Baggins will catch up, which of you want to bet with me? If you didn't know the plot, judging by Bilbo's performance yesterday and not having gotten up early this morning, Aldril wouldn't have broached this subject because the chance of Bilbo following them was almost nil. But now, he can earn some extra silver coins that would do his economy some good. At Aldril proposed wager, the dwarves were silent for a few seconds, only to be broken by Gandalf. I'm in favor of Bilbo coming, so I'm betting in his favor. After hearing Gandalf join in the wager, several dwarves began to speak. I'll take Aldril's bet, I bet the hobbit won't come. Well, this time I'll be against Aldril and bet that Bilbo won't come. Keeley and Boffer spoke quickly, which caused several other dwarves who were interested in betting to start entering the wager. Count me in, I suppose Mr. Baggins could catch up with us, so I'll bet on him too, Balin said. Gloin, seeing Balin bet in favor, also joined in. Same thing Balin said. Keeley also followed him, this time I agree with Aldril, I bet Bilbo will come. Don't be an idiot, Keeley, the hobbit won't come. The idiot is you, Dwilin. What did you say? While the group of dwarves were gambling and having fun, at Bag End little Bilbo had just woken up. When he woke up, he saw that the house was empty and everything was tidy and clean, as if the group of dwarves from last night did not exist. If the food in the food store had not run out, Bilbo would have thought that everything that happened last night was a dream. Looking around the empty room and remembering yesterday's bustle, Bilbo suddenly felt a pang of regret. As he approached the dining room, he saw on his table the contract he refused to sign. At that moment, Bilbo could hear Gandalf's voice in his head. Bilbo, your mother, your grandfather, your great-grandfather, your great-great-grandfather, they were all extraordinary, don't break that tradition. You are also a member of the Took family. Do you plan to stay in this little house for the rest of your life? Suddenly, an indescribable impulse grew in Bilbo's heart, Yes, I don't want to, I don't want to live like this all my life, 
I don't want to be normal, I want an adventure that I can tell about. Bilbo immediately found a pen and signed his name on the contract. Then he packed some clothes and ran out of Bag End, running off into the distance. Half an hour later, carrying a rucksack that he did not even have time to fasten at the top, Bilbo finally spotted the expedition team from a distance in the forest about to leave Hobbiton. Bilbo waved the contract in his hand and ran forward happily. I've signed it. Hearing Bilbo's voice, Aldril turned around and smiled, and this is how the story of The Hobbit begins, what a thrill. Hey! Your favorite author here. I hope you are enjoying the FIC. According to the voting, Toriel will be the romantic interest and she will also have a special origin. Chapter 17, Chapter 16, Strange Whisper Minutes before Bilbo's arrival. You were right, coming here was a waste of time, Dwillin was annoyed, he didn't understand why Gandalf had recommended a cowardly hobbit who only wasted their time. Actually, it wasn't a waste of time, at least one adventurer joined the team, Keeley said as he gave Aldril a thumbs up. Not only that. I was also able to win two bets haha, Boffer replied cheerfully as he raised his head in mockery. Hey, Boffer, you only won for last night's competition, the bet on whether the Hobbit will come isn't over yet, replied Gloin, annoyed, but the reality was that he was a bit nervous as there was no sign of the Hobbit catching up with them. He trusted Aldril because he had made him win a bet last night, but as the minutes passed he began to doubt if it was right to bet in favor of the Hobbit. Haha, you were foolish to bet in his favor, Gloin though I admit that Mr. Baggins prepared a sumptuous dinner for us last night. But that doesn't mean I have the guts to take risks on our adventure. Dwillin's comment caused several dwarves to nod in agreement. Although the hobbit was likable, the cowardice he displayed made them not entirely like him. What dwarves hate most is cowardice, for to them it is a clear sign of weakness. They prefer to die fighting than to save themselves by fleeing, this was demonstrated in the Battle of Azanulbazar and in the Battle of the Five Armies, in which despite being outnumbered, it only took Thorin to stand up and lead them to fight to the end. It's been several minutes and the hobbit hasn't shown up, so go get those coins out at once. Just wait a few more minutes. You want to wait just because you bet in his favor. Haha, <laughs> maybe you won last night's bet, but this time you'll lose it because you're an idiot. Who are you calling an idiot? It was almost noon, the sunlight gave a calm atmosphere to the forest, the expedition team was talking about the bet. Those who had bet in Bilbo's favor began to pull out their coins, for they had given up hope that he would appear. The only exceptions were Gandalf, Aldril, and Balin, who were more patient and waited for Bilbo's arrival. And it didn't take long, for just as the dwarves were getting ready to split the bet, a familiar voice came from the back, which made everyone stop. I signed it. A short figure wearing a burgundy coat, a backpack that wasn't buckled, was running barefoot and waving something in his hand. Haha, <laughs> look. Mr. Baggins did come. A cheerful Keeley turned to look at the other dwarves, who had a sour face, as they had lost the bet. Damn, I lost again. What you won last night you lost now, Boffer, ha 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 ha. It was just bad luck. As the dwarves chatted, Bilbo arrived waving the contract. As he stood near the dwarves, he propped himself up on his knees from exhaustion and handed the contract to Balin. Who, upon receiving it, took out a pair of reading glasses and looked for Bilbo's signature. When he saw the signature, he looked at Bilbo and with a smile said, Welcome to Thorin Oakenshield's expedition, Mr. Baggins. After Balin's words, the whole expedition party laughed politely. A hobbit who has never traveled very far can give up his quiet, comfortable and relaxing life, and that deserves admiration. At least the courage he showed made the dwarves respect him a little. Give him a pony. Thorin looked at Bilbo and there was a hint of satisfaction in his eyes. Though still against his coming with them, he recognized the courage he showed in agreeing to come with them. Bilbo POV I had never participated in battles or adventures before, let alone riding a pony. I know the pony is safer than a horse, but still I couldn't help but get nervous. I wanted to decline and tell them that it wasn't necessary, that I was a good walker and there was no need to give me a pony but they wouldn't let me speak as the white-bearded dwarf I gave the contract to quickly passed me a pony. Fortunately the pony was my size, so it wasn't hard to ride. As I was arranging my things to be more comfortable, I heard the voice of the white-bearded dwarf, who I learned was named Balin. Hey, Dwillin, it's time for you to pay. At his words, a bag of coins brushed past the side of my face and so they continued to toss bags of money back and forth. What's going on? With a confused face, I turned to look at Gandalf, 
who didn't know at what point he had stepped up beside me. They made a bet, they bet that you wouldn't come, most of them bet against it. Gandalf's words left me speechless. Of course, why didn't I figure it out? Last night they did the same thing, betting on Aldril and Keeley's competence. But I was curious, would Gandalf have been for me or against me? To satisfy my curiosity, I asked, and you, Gandalf, were you for or against? As soon as I finished speaking, a bag of money was tossed towards Gandalf, who looked at me with a smile. Of course it was for, I never doubted you, he told me as he tucked the bag into his tunic. As I was flattered at Gandalf's confidence, the scary-eyed but kindly man stepped to my other side. His words surprised me in a gratifying way. Boffer, only you are missing, he said to then catch a bag that was thrown by the dwarf who told me about smog and made me faint from fear. Noticing my look, the man gave me a smile as he shook the bag of coins. I bet on you too, Bilbo. It was nice that not only Gandalf trusted me. He certainly has his scary eyes, but he is a kind person. Thank you for your trust, I said as I gave them both a smile. Aldril POV. You're welcome, we'll be adventuring companions from now on, I said casually, but the truth is, if I didn't know the plot, I would have bet against Bilbo as well, as his behavior last night gave the impression that he wouldn't risk leaving the comfort of his home for a very dangerous adventure. I really did not dislike him, nor did I intend to belittle Bilbo as the dwarves did, as I knew he was the main character in The Hobbit. Besides, Bilbo was showing that small people can accomplish great things. Plus he will be the supreme one-ring wielder and the only one at the moment who is able to ward off the evil influence it provokes. I watched as the little hobbit was silent for a few seconds as he ducked his head and muttered, Fellow adventurers. It caused me to chuckle as he began to nod quickly and then raise his head and decisively say, Yes. I am now a member of the team and my own adventure has begun. Perhaps I can achieve the same accomplishments as my great-great-grandfather and great-great-grandfather in the future. I certainly didn't know what was going through Bilbo's mind, but I was a bit lost in my thoughts as I thought that, if the plot remains unchanged, the One Ring is still in the hands of Gollum, who is deep in the Goblin Realm. If we really get to the Goblin Realm, should I snatch the One Ring from Gollum before Bilbo does? Middle-earth is a world with gods, and I don't know if my decision will cause them to change the destiny they have possibly imposed and, consequently, get annoyed and end up killing me. As I was thinking about this question, a beautiful white bird settled on my shoulder and I could hear a soft and beautiful voice saying to me, that is not the bright fate that awaits you. At the voice, I looked all around, only to see the white bird fly off, as one of its beautiful feathers landed on my shoulder. As I picked it up, I could feel so much calm and a touch of love as if it was the embrace of a grandmother or mother. What the fuck was that? I said to myself as I watched the bird fly off into the horizon. As I watched the bird fly away, a memory of the old Aldril popped into my mind. Flashback scene. In a small village surrounded by lush forests, an Aldril was seen as a child in a clearing accompanied by a white bird. Not long ago, Aldril had witnessed several children being escorted by their parents, as they flashed smiles and affectionate gestures. Aldril had grown up in an orphanage, where he had never received affection, the caregivers were indifferent towards the children, so it was not a good environment to grow up in. So, before such a joyful scene, Aldril felt an emptiness in his heart that made him run to the forest to vent his sadness. It was a sunny afternoon, as he ran through the forest, overwhelmed by sadness and tears he could not hold back, Aldril sat in a clearing and let his tears flow freely. The leaves of the trees seemed to whisper words of comfort as a gentle breeze caressed his anguished face. In the midst of his grief, a beautiful white bird descended from the sky and landed gently in front of him. With a gentle flutter, the bird wiped away his tears with its soft feathers, as if it understood Aldril's suffering and wanted to offer him comfort. Surprised by the bird's presence, Aldril felt a strange warmth and comfort he had never experienced before. Without saying a word, Aldril and the bird looked deeply into each other's eyes, and in that moment, he felt an inexplicable connection, as if the bird was someone close to him. After wiping away his tears, Aldril watched as the bird flew off into the horizon. Now calmer, he got up and returned to the orphanage where they didn't even care how ragged he looked. It was during the morning of the other day that a kindly old lady appeared in town, the old lady went to the orphanage where she adopted Aldril. Certainly, Aldril was a little scared at first, but he calmed down when he felt that affection he had felt with the bird the day before. From that day on, the old woman raised him like a son, until he grew up. When he turned sixteen, the old woman mysteriously disappeared. That day, Aldril was quite depressed, as he felt abandoned 
but in his moment of sadness the bird of his childhood appeared again. It landed on his shoulder and rubbed its head on Aldril's face, as if to comfort him. After his mood improved, the bird left again and he had not seen it again until today. Present. So, since my childhood you've been there, I muttered as I watched the bird walk away. Who was the original Aldril? Or rather, what am I doing in this world? Transmigrated or reincarnated and only two months ago regained the memories. Endless questions arose. I hope to find answers. I've seen that many people are upset that the MC doesn't drink or smoke, are they really upset about that? I personally have never smoked, the only time I drank I was disgusted and from that moment on I never drank again. Anyway, this chapter leaves a huge clue about the origin of the MC. Chapter 18, Chapter 17, Rain and Talk General POV Oblivious to Aldril's thoughts, the expedition party moved on. They had just left Hobbiton and it was only noon. The whole group was cheerful, as it was the first day of their great journey. However, the sky, originally clear, began to cloud over and immediately a heavy rain began to fall, as if welcoming them to their first day of travel. Just after they emerged from the forest, all the team members looked like wet rats in the rain. The conditions they found themselves in caused Bilbo to lose his enthusiasm for the adventure. If we keep walking in the rain, we might get sick, why don't we find a place to shelter from the rain? Suggested Bilbo, as the raindrops slightly blinded his vision. At his suggestion, Thorin spoke in an indifferent tone, Mr. Baggins, this is one of those summer rains. It won't last long, besides there is no place to take shelter. Just wait for the rain to pass. Complimenting Thorin's comments, Keeley turned to Bilbo and with a mocking look said, A little rain won't affect us, Bilbo. On the contrary, being exposed will make you a little stronger. Skeptical at what Keeley said, Bilbo looked at Aldril to see if it was true. Is it true that rain will make you stronger? Shaking his head, Aldril wanted to have a little fun and gave Bilbo a white lie, maybe. After all, I've had trips with lots of rain and now you can see how strong I am. Nodding, Bilbo lifted his face to the sky, allowing the raindrops to hit him squarely in the face, as if he were accepting the rain. Watching Bilbo's behavior, many of the dwarves began to laugh. Their laughter caused Bilbo to look at them strangely. You are too innocent, Bilbo. Of course we are joking, Aldril said, as he shook his head and laughed a little. Hearing what Aldril said, Bilbo frowned slightly, annoyed at the joke that had been played on him. Don't overthink it, Bilbo. This is part of the adventure, even more extreme climates await us, Gandalf reminded him. Well, it looks like the adventure is a little different than I imagined, Bilbo muttered. The rain intensified even more, making the expedition members feel a little uneasy, as they thought the rain would stop within a few hours. But, on the contrary, it intensified. Hey, Mr. Gandalf, can't you make the rain stop? No longer enduring the rain, Dory asked aloud. These heavy rains won't stop until they stop naturally. If you want to change the weather, you should seek out other wizards, Gandalf replied, as he ran his hand over his face to wipe away some of the droplets clouding his vision. Others. Bilbo, who was riding beside Gandalf, asked. Other what? Are there other wizards besides you? Gandalf turned his head to look at Bilbo, of course there are others. There are five of us in all. The most powerful among us is Saruman the white wizard. There are the two blue-robed wizards, but I have forgotten their names. The other is Radagast, the brown wizard. The thing about the blue-robed wizards was true. Gandalf did not remember their names, he only remembered that they traveled with Saruman to the east, beyond the Sea of Rune, and he does not know what happened to them. So what do the others do, are they still travelers just like you? Bilbo, like a curious hobbit, kept asking Gandalf all sorts of questions about wizards. And as Gandalf was good-natured, he constantly answered Bilbo's various questions with a smile. Aldril, being a fan of knowledge, did not miss the conversation Bilbo and Gandalf were having. He even joined in by asking a question that nodded him after remembering the white bird from his childhood. By the way, Gandalf, I have a question, do you know anything about a white bird that shines like a star even in broad daylight? At Aldril's question, Gandalf looked at him with a thoughtful look, while stroking his wet beard. MMM, let me think. Only the Lady Elwing the Beautiful comes to mind, a woman who was blessed by the great Vala Ulmo. She was blessed with the gift of becoming a white bird that radiates beauty and a light comparable to the stars. She is the wife of Arendil, of whom I have already told you, 
and therefore the mother of Lord Elrond of Rivendell, why do you ask? After the explanation, Gandalf looked at Aldril with a questioning look. No reason. As a child I thought I saw a bird just like it, but I think it was just my imagination. Responding somewhat effusively, Aldril spoke no more on the subject, but pondered what Gandalf said. Piecing all the clues together, Aldril felt he was close to discovering who he really was. He needed to search for answers, he would use the short time the expedition was in Rivendell to get them. Gandalf knew Aldril had something he was keeping from him, but he did not press him to talk, for he too was beginning to suspect that Aldril's origins might not be simple. Half an hour later. Just as Thorin had said, the heavy rain that had made the group uncomfortable ceased. The clouds that darkened the sky began to disperse and the rays of sunlight fell upon the land, shining brightly. After the rain stopped, the atmosphere began to become more lively, as the dwarves began to make jokes to each other about how wet they looked. They were also on the lookout for a possible wild beast that could become an extra portion of food, should it dare to attack them. Looking at the more lively atmosphere, Aldril slowed down and, wanting to know more about the adventurers, approached the dwarf Balin. Mr. Balin, I hope you can tell me about the adventurer Tindomil. In a cheerful mood, Balin remembered that a night ago this young man was very interested in the adventurer, so he cheerfully said, Sure, I'll start by saying that Tindomil is the daughter of Elrose, first king of Numenor. There are many documented adventures of hers. The most famous were when she faced a great basilisk from the east, a huge creature capable of murder with its gaze. Over the years she did more exploits, such as the time she faced a fearsome dragon from the south, where she gained the name of the Dragon Slayer. Besides the fact that her beauty was said to be comparable to that of the beautiful elf Galadriel, her hair was said to be as black as night, shining like starlight. And so, Balin began to describe various feats of Tindomil, while Aldril listened very happily, feeling an inexplicable feeling of familiarity every time the adventurer's name was said. Although he was a little disappointed to learn that a few years ago she disappeared and it is not known what became of her, they do not know if she married or had children. Due to the great feats she did, the name adventurer became famous and at the same time there are very few people who have held that title. One month later. In a thick forest, Aldril held his bow and hid very carefully behind a tree. Not far away, the dwarf Keeley, also wielding a bow and arrow, crouched carefully behind the undergrowth. A little further ahead of the two of them, seven or eight burly deer were eating grass. Ingrained instinct made the deer look up and around them very cautiously. Aldril raised his hand to gesture to Keeley. Nodding toward Aldril's signal, Keeley positioned himself in a suitable hiding place and waited. After waiting a few seconds in silence, Aldril took advantage of the moment when the deer lowered its head to continue eating and fired his arrows. She's, she's. The two prepared arrows went out, tracing a straight line and hitting the heads of the two deer. Keeley was not far behind, firing the prepared arrow, it hit another deer in the stomach, wounding it. The other deer, seeing the attack, ran away. When the two returned to the temporary rest camp carrying three deer, the others greeted them with great joy. It's been a month since we left the Shire and something tells me that sooner or later we will meet the orcs, thought Aldril, as he left the deer for them so that the other dwarves could prepare supper. Soon the chase will begin and Gandalf will lead us to Rivendell, where I will find answers to my questions, he said, as he looked at the horizon where the sun was beginning to set. Dash. A Surprise Chapter in this chapter I have given many clues about Aldril, so comment your deductions. I also take this opportunity to thank immensely my Patreon subscribers, your support makes me take this novel more seriously and be constant. Remember that you can support me on Patreon where there are 6 chapters ahead and where I will upload my Resident Evil FIC. Chapter 19, Chapter 18, First Meeting At night. The members of the expedition team were camping in a mountainous wilderness, where only rocks could be seen all around. The deer hunted by Aldril and Keeley were taken by the dwarves to be prepared for dinner, as well as to prepare rations for the road. Adding the meat from the deer, as well as a variety of vegetables and greens, made today's dinner very hearty, though naturally dwarven dinners are usually like this, as they tend to eat a lot. Tsssssss. A pot was suspended on a makeshift base made of stones, underneath, wood crackling from time to time brought the simmering meat soup to a boil. This pot of venison soup gave off a delightful aroma making the bellies of several of the dwarves growl. Dinner was a time for the expedition group to relax after spending a full day hiking in these arid mountains. Of course, despite their relaxation, the expedition group did not let their guard down, as they have entered territory where several groups of orcs have been spotted. 
While the dwarves were preparing dinner, Aldril was on top of a rock, not far from the camp, enjoying the cool evening breeze and also standing guard. With a bit of curiosity, Aldril opened his system and focused on world exploration, which had only gone up very little, almost nothing. World scan, 0.41%. It's been a whole month now and I haven't gained any attribute points despite killing all those deer and bears along the way. At least the world exploration has gone up a bit, Aldril thought, with a positive attitude. A few days ago, world exploration went up 0.01% and he is grateful, even if it is a small percentage. Looking at the dwarves, Aldril gave a sigh. After demonstrating his bow skills, he was assigned the job of being the team's hunter alongside Keeley. Aldril. In his moment of contemplation, a shout rang out, calling out to him. Turning around, he saw that dinner was ready and they were calling him to come eat with them. Approaching them, Aldril filled a bowl of venison soup, poured himself a glass of fruit wine and began to enjoy a relaxing moment. While enjoying his dinner, Gloin stood up and, with his glass raised, said, Here's to Aldril and Keeley, who managed to bring a good portion of meat that allows us to enjoy this dinner. Hey Gloin, you've had enough to drink. Yes. We don't have enough wine to toast every dinner. We can toast with water. Maybe it's possible you can get drunk on that, ha ha ha. I agree. Ha, 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 ha. The witticisms of the dwarves made the atmosphere cheerful, making everyone laugh. It had been a month since the team had left Hobbiton. Because they entered the wild mountains and thus possible orc territory, there was no town in between. Because they are all in the wild mountains, there are no villages or towns along the way, so the drinks the dwarves brought were being consumed very quickly. Now there is a lot of dried food left that is easy to transport and preserve, such as some dried vegetables, potatoes, and dried meats. As for the drinks, it is easy to see why they were consumed quickly, after all, the dwarves used to drink a lot. After they had dined, the night became quieter, without any noise. Only the cool wind of early autumn remained. Aldril, Bilbo, and Gandalf were sitting on top of a rock, enjoying the night sky. While Bilbo and Gandalf enjoyed smoking, Aldril was drinking fruit wine. He had never had an alcoholic drink before, but a few weeks ago he was encouraged to drink the fruit wine and was pleased with the wine. Eh, uh, smoking on this night sure is relaxing, Bilbo said, as he closed his eyes pleasantly. Laughing lightly, Aldril offered some wine to Gandalf. Would you like a sip? No, thank you. I have some here. Gandalf declined as he shook a canteen he pulled from his tunic. Rising, Aldril stretched and climbed down from the stone. All right, I'll go to sleep, remember it's your turn to stand guard, Bilbo, don't fall asleep. Opening his eyes in surprise, Bilbo jumped. Is it really my turn? But I'm no good at standing guard, he said quickly, but his protests fell on deaf ears, as Aldril only waved his hand dismissively. He knew that, even though Bilbo was no good at standing guard, there were he and Gandalf who had good instincts and could easily tell when there would be danger. Watching Aldril leave and Bilbo's nervous face, Gandalf laughed. Don't think too hard, Bilbo. If you see anything wrong, just shout. As the night grew darker and the moon disappeared into the clouds, a campfire could be seen burning in the makeshift camp and around it several sleeping dwarves could be seen. Only one small hobbit was awake, looking around nervously, next to him was a sleeping Gandalf. All around was silent as if the whole world had fallen asleep. This made the already nervous Bilbo even more nervous. In front of Bilbo, was Aldril leaning against a rock, with his sword and bow beside him. Just then, Aldril opened his eyes, as he had felt a sense of danger. Being able to see well in the darkness, Aldril was able to identify a group of orcs deep in the forest moving silently towards them. At that moment, without hesitation, he stood up and grabbed his bow. This action unnerved Bilbo, who was unable to say anything in the face of Aldril's shout that made everyone in the party wake up. Orcs. Shiss. After his shout, he shot an arrow, hitting an orc squarely in the head, killing it. Hearing Aldril's shout, all the team members stood up. The orcs, seeing that they were exposed, stopped being silent and ran to confront the group. Without having time to think about why the plot was different from what he remembered, Aldril fired an arrow again, successfully killing another orc. This whole process happened in just a few seconds. The dozen dwarves who were selected to participate in the restoration expedition were dwarves who had experienced some fights with the orcs in the past and the younger ones were dwarves with good sword skills. After being awakened by Aldril's shout, 
they immediately reacted without panicking, they just quickly grabbed their weapons and faced the orcs. Dash. Surprise chapter for the 200 Power Stones. How do you like my writing? I have found that unlike other authors, I focus a lot on the dialogues. Chapter 20, Chapter 19, First Fight. General POV. Two more arrows were fired, heading straight for the two closest orcs. After the arrows were shot, the two orcs gave a groan as their bodies softened and they fell down dead. The dwarf Gloin hastily stood up and grabbed his axe to prepare for the fight, but when he looked up he saw two orcs fall at his feet. Slightly surprised, he saw that there were two arrows embedded in the middle of the orc's brows. Turning his head slightly, he gave Aldril a thumbs up. Well done, Aldril, but those orcs were mine. In his moment of distraction, he failed to notice another orc approaching at a rapid pace towards him as he raised his sword. Shiss. Gloin saw Aldril raise his bow and fire in his direction again, so he startled a little and could only hear the sound of a whimper behind him. Yug. Turning around, he saw an orc standing behind him, holding his sword high, while he had an arrow embedded in his eye. Don't get distracted, Gloin, it's a rookie mistake to do so, Aldril said with a smirk as he continued firing arrows at the incoming orcs. Damn. Did you just call me a rookie? I'll show you how wrong you are, come on you damn orcs. Annoyed by what Aldril said, Gloin shouted and ran towards the orcs without a second thought. As he approached the first orc, he raised his axe and with great force plunged it deep into the orc's shoulder, who let out a scream of agony before dying. Without pausing, Gloin pulled the axe from the orc's shoulder and spun on himself to kill another orc approaching his left flank. Shiss. Another arrow was shot and, with it, a wargs that was rapidly approaching towards Aldril died. The death of the wargs caused its rider to fall and be crushed by its weight. Aldril's outstanding performance made the leader of the orc scouting team pay attention to him, as this human was annoying and had already killed many of his group. Therefore, he shouted, to the human. Kill the human. After his shout, a dozen or so wargs came out of the forest and charged towards the camp, which was certainly a surprise. The wargs did not attack the group from the start, as the orcs wanted to make a silent attack. Being too noisy, the wargs left them in the forest while they crept up on them. Now that the fight had begun and the dwarves had been alerted, there was no longer any need for a surprise attack, so the fierce dire wolves came out of the forest to join the fight. Receiving the order from the leader, the wargs changed their trajectory and went straight for the kill on Aldril. Shiss, shiss, shiss. Three arrows were fired in succession, killing three wargos. Aldril, seeing that they were rapidly approaching him, hung up his bow and quickly drew his sword and prepared for the attack. Come, you damned bastards. This would be the first time he would test his silver sword, given by the system, and where he would put into action the wolf school sword style that the witchers learn to fight monsters. Just as he drew his sword, he saw a warg leap and lunge at him, so he quickly leapt to the right and dodged the warg's attack. After dodging, he nimbly swung the sword and, with a silver flash given by the moonlight effect, the orc rider's head was cut off with ease, demonstrating the sword's terrifying edge. Without having time to marvel at the ease with which it cut, he plunged the sword into the head of the warg that had turned to attack him. Without giving him a respite, another warg leapt to attack him, but this time Aldril traced a horizontal arc, nearly cleaving the dire wolf in two. Swish! As it was almost split in two, the belly of the warg released all of its entrails, causing them to be scattered and almost land on Aldril's face, who dodged them by taking a step backwards. Yuck! Said Aldril as he decapitated the orc that was riding the dire wolf that now lay at his feet. As he decapitated the orc, another one came up behind him and, with a shout, swung his sword at Aldril. At the orc's attack, Aldril raised his sword and both swords clashed, making a clashing sound. Clink! The two struggled for a few seconds, only to have Aldril forcefully fling him backwards and wedge his sword into the orc's stomach, managing to kill another orc. At that moment, two riderless wargos rushed towards him. Aldril POV! I was certainly quite surprised at the efficiency of this sword. It was making me cut through these wolves and orcs quite easily, it was like cutting butter with a hot knife. As I watched two more wargs rush towards me, I felt a bit of nervousness, but at the same time it was very exciting. Two against one, a fair battle, damn beasts, I muttered as I braced myself for the inevitable encounter. I had no doubt that, with the size of these wargos, their sharp nails and long fangs, they could easily murder me if I was careless. It was useless to worry about that now, as these bastards had already rushed towards me. 
with a thrill rising from within me, I advanced towards them. Come on, you bastards! I took a chance and charged towards them, clenched my sword with both hands and swung with all my might at the first dire wolf. Swish! With my strength and the edge of the sword, the first warg head was severed. As it was decapitated, the warg body fell and twisted from muscle memory before dying. After cutting off its head, I turned my attention to the other warg, which had leapt to attack me. Preparing to dodge, a light shot out behind me, causing the warg to be pushed far away and lay motionless. Boom! Turning around, I saw Gandalf, who had cast a spell with his staff, which was still glowing with a slowly dimming white light. Damn it, Gandalf, you must teach me how to do that. I said as I walked up to Gandalf and stood next to him. They certainly didn't show his full greatness in the movies, from what little I managed to see in this fight, he's quite skilled with his sword and staff, plus he kills orcs quite easily. Haha, <laughs> maybe I'll teach you he said to me as we prepared to fight the orcs that were coming in dozens towards us. I didn't understand how so many orcs had appeared, a scouting party wouldn't be that many, would it? Gandalf held a long sword in one hand and his staff in the other, while I used both my hands to hold my silver sword. Grayaha! The orcs rushed at us with a roar. Gandalf pierced one orc with his sword while, with his staff, he struck another, causing its head to turn 180 degrees. The precision and strength of his movements were astounding, showing the skill of an experienced warrior. I, on the other hand, decapitated another orc with a single fluid motion, blood splattered the air around me. Moving my sword swiftly, I traced a diagonal slash at another enemy, shattering his armor with the force of my blow. The group of orcs began to surround us, their grunts the only thing we could hear. Gandalf and I positioned ourselves back to back, circling slowly as we engaged the enemies. Our movements were perfectly synchronized, a deadly dance that showed how well coordinated we were, as if we had fought countless battles together. Gandalf cast a spell with his staff, a blinding blast of light that sent several orcs flying. Taking advantage of the distraction, I advanced with a series of quick strikes, slashing and stabbing at orcs that came too close. One orc tried to attack me from behind, but Gandalf, with a graceful twist, brought him down with a swipe of his staff before he could reach me. Left. I shouted as I threw one of my daggers toward an orc who planned to attack Gandalf from the right. Following my warning, Gandalf swung his sword and intercepted the orc who planned to sneak attack him, I watched as their blades clashed. Clink. After the clash, Gandalf, with much technique, managed to disarm the orc to finally stab him. The battle continued for a while. Gandalf and I, a deadly combination, seemed invincible. Every orc that fell at our feet was a testament to our skill. Seeing their numbers quite reduced, the orcs chose to retreat, but we would not let them escape, so, drawing my bow, I began to fire arrow after arrow. I did not know at what point Keeley began to fire his bow at the fleeing orcs, but, Unfortunately, running out of arrows I was unable to kill all the orcs. Two got away, I said in frustration as I turned and spoke to Gandalf, only to be met with surprised looks from the dwarves as Gandalf and I stood in the middle of a circle where more than a dozen orcs lay dead around us. Never make them angry, I heard Philly say in a low voice. Is my grammar really so bad as to tell me to write in my native language? Anyway, thanks to those of you who have given me your advice on how to write, I appreciate it immensely. Thanks for listening.